storm's coming. Yeah, it's a big one. The big one. The one I've been looking out for. Time to ride home. Make peace with somebody. Dear Ma, you goat-headed, mishappen, wall-eyed witch. Got some news for you. Secrets out. Signed, your son with the hairy paws. Huh. As if I knew who Ma was. Everybody's got one. Or two, maybe. Secrets, I mean. I got a doozy. It's a serious mother. Hard hitting it sometimes, but I get by. Others got theirs writ all over their faces. They're the ones who get found out and end up dangling from somebody's line. But you only get hooked if you take the bait, right? Maybe. Range is routine. I can put six shots on a quarter and get them changed for the gum machine when my hands ain't shaking. So I wink some geek with a ricochet, like who gives a toss. Suits do, I guess. Some attitude they got. Screw them. Spending my nights at the prophecy. It's for fallen Christians, you know. I ain't got that stuff, but I lied to get through the door. Hey, it's free. For the fallen. So, I guess I qualify. Prophecy's part of the apocalypse. Did you know that? I didn't. Some drunk bum down the hall told me that. Spat as he said it, too. Then he croaked. Happens a lot around here. Been thinking about moving on. Yeah. Catching the 8 o'clock up to the Yukon. But first, there's bills to settle. Some loose ends to tie. It's cool. Yeah. Up in the Klondike. Where nobody knows but me. I'll get away from you. What's coming? Yeah. Do that. Get away. Yeah. You ever feel like a rat? A trap? What do you call those things? Pinwheels or something? Like you're running for your life. But getting nowhere. Just nowhere. Except the edge of the dark. And the dreams of death in the shadowed rooms of the prophecy. Ah! Oh. It's the same. Every night. Pain and bones and spikes. Dagger hands. Bloodshot. With vile stench and horror. Just like the old geezer said. The apocalypse. And the secrets are exposed and all the running ends. Hell. Hell is coming. Mr. Logan. Who shaved the patient? I did. What did you use? Poultry shears? What? Look at the poor guy. Not exactly haute couture. That's really weird. I shaved him 20 minutes ago. He was smooth as an eight ball. Uh, help me with him. Yeah. He's real heavy for just a little guy. Heads up, gentlemen. The professor's arriving. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Dr. Cornelius. Are we set to begin? Thanks filling, sir. Few minutes. How's the patient? Could be better. Um... He put up some resistance when the boys picked him up last night. Uh, get him off of me! They had to jostle him. Is he damaged? Any deep cuts? He's okay. But we can't afford leakage. We plugged him up tight. Professor, Dr. Cornelius, we can begin now. 
Shit. Didn't you get him with that stun gun? Of course I did. Point blank. Begin. Feed. Conductive feed. Steady. Adamantum breakdown, 29 and 1, sir. Feed. It'll reduce, no problem. Steady. I'll compensate. Okay. Feed. Steady. Cardio attack. High. Higher than we expected. Suffusion enacting. Feed. Steady. Professor's not gonna like this. He said no body damage. Sure. But he didn't say what a tough son of a gun he'd be. Steady. Things are going well, Doctor. I'm pleased. Feed. Suffusion. Steady. Both steady. This is an extraordinary experiment, Professor. I'm honored to be part of it. Of course you are, Cornelius. Cardio tech? Rising. Not good. I'd guess it's ANS. Up the Pheno B, two points. Steady. No, one point. Any more than that, who have beans for brains. Feed. Is there cause for consent? I don't think so, Professor. He chose Logan for his remarkable stamina. What we're getting here is his autonomic nervous system kicking in. He's a hard fella, even when he's unconscious. Chelation, begin. What was that? Resistance, sir. Compensate. Maintain. Resistance. Equalize. Feed. Impeded. Feed. Impeded. Feed backup channel. Balance coming. Feed. Steady. Cardio attack, Miss Hines. Rising rapidly, sir. Feed. Steady. Hines. Would you please access Mr. Logan's medical profile in history? Yes, sir. I studied it long enough, but I could have missed On screen, sir. Detail any cardio abnormality. None, sir. You're really letting me down here, Cornelius. Why didn't you prepare for this in advance? Feed. Impeded. Equalize. I thought I'd prepared for everything, Professor. But who could foresee this? Feed. Feed. Steady. Feed. It seems that Logan's highly accelerated heart rate is draining the adamantum reservoir at a rate of... Heinz? 53 and 1, sir. The rate should be 24 and 1. I couldn't program for that, Professor. Actually, it really doesn't seem credible. But I think I can assure you there'll be no further problems, Professor. Feed. Steady. Feed. You see, Logan's heart rate can't possibly go any higher. He'd be... Impeded. Superman or something. Equalize. We're passing the equalization point, sir. We'll have to compensate on every channel. Astonishing. Refeed, then. On all channels. What's causing this, Doctor? Your guess, Professor. We have enough Thorazine and Logan to drop a bullock. So the problem is obviously more than an auto-nervous system or a cast-iron constitution. Compound feed. Maintain at level two. Level two maintain. Feed. Doctor, I have some interesting data for you. Yes, Miss Hines. Maintain. According to MedFax, Mr. Logan has been shot at least five times and survived each attack. Four to the trunk, once in the leg. Tough geezer. We know this, Hines. But the bioscans show nothing in epidural nor internal scar tissue. Cornelius, didn't you say that Logan was hurt last night? Yeah. Then, where are his wounds? Hines, do you have readings? I have a trace, but... No show. An hour ago, he had a dislocated jaw, cuts, abrasions, feet. Now there's nothing. Maintain. On the board, there's a definite linear equation between this phenomenon and the intense cardio activity. And, well, I don't know how important this is. Seems silly, but Mr. Logan's hair has almost entirely grown back in just 20 minutes. Speed. Maintain. We seem to be in the midst of something unprecedented. Our Mr. Logan is somewhat more than human. Okay, I have to rethink this fast. If the patient's wounds are now healed, his heart rate could drop. He'd be prepared to de-escalate at a second's notice. That's plan one. Plan two, the rate continues to rise, pump equivalent non-repinephrine to its ratio. But keep me informed of all changes. Miss Hines, is the adamantum reservoir sufficient for all this? Sufficient at current rate, sir. Not good enough. Go to reserve. I'll need authorization from- You have it, madam. Go to the reserve adamantium. Professor, I could use your advice on- Professor? How'd you like that? Feed. Maintain. 
We're in the middle of a crisis and he walks out. It is I. It is safe. No one can hear. Yes, I know. But I have something to say. Yes. The operation is proceeding right now. Yes. Of course he'll survive it. That's the point. You knew. You knew that Logan was a mutant. Cornelius here. Status? Resting, Doctor. But he's on the floor, not on his cot. It's okay. Anything to report? No, sir. Except... What? Well, you know. Looks like the guy's really been through the mill. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Keep an eye on him. Out. This fact comes as quite a surprise. Why did you not inform me? I... I told you. No one can hear me. I'm in some lab down the hall. I can see the operation on a monitor. I must insist that you hear me out. Logan is a mutant. He has some kind of superhuman power to regenerate damaged tissue. He could be just about immortal. And you didn't see fit to inform me of this somewhat important factor? I'm in there with that backwater Cornelius and his staff. And this girl, practically a typist, discovers the truth about Logan by pushing a few buttons on a blasted computer. Makes me look like I don't know anything. I had to leave the operations room in case they asked me any questions about it. I felt like a fool. Yes. Yes, you could say I'm a bit put out. Yes. I'm supposed to be in control of these people. How can I even give an illusion of that if I'm not briefed by you? Do you not trust me? I see. And I have one last question. Feed. What else do I not know about Experiment X? Feed. Steady. Heinz, reading. Channel sufficient, sir. But there's an excess drain at, um, wait. At the flexor brevis minima digiti section. Plain language, please, Miss Heinz. Hands and wrists, sir. Sorry. Doctor. He just woke up. How does he look? Cow flop. Is he moving? No, just staring. Okay, keep monitoring. Call me if anything happens. Out. Feed. Steady. We're gonna need some advice on this. Anybody know where the professor is? No? Have him paged then. Feed. Doctor? Yes, status. What is it? He's moving now. Violently? He just leaned forward a bit. Status. Yes, sir. You don't have to tell me every time the patient shifts weight. Yes, sir. Feed. Accelerated. Feed. Cornelius, what is all the fuss? Professor, where are you? What do you want, Doctor? We have a problem. Could you return to the OR? I'm busy. What's the problem? There's excess adamantum drain to the manima, flexo, hand, hands and wrists. We can't account for it and we're unable to stop it. Accelerated. Feed. Uh, Professor, do you hear me? Feed. Of course. It's all part of my program, Cornelius. Do you think I don't know what I'm doing? Um, no, sir, of course not. Status? Patient's fine, sir. He's just staring at his hand. Hand? Yeah. The wire's on his hands. Hmm. Better come over. Try to call the professor. Have him meet me there. Out. Feed. Uh, professor, sir? This is the status tech worker at Lab 2? Yes, what? Uh, Dr. Cornelius asked me to... Oh! Oh my god! What is it, man? Blood! Oh! Something's happening! Blood spurting out of his hands! Oh my god! Status 2! Where is Dr. Cornelius? Oh, sir! I need help here. I'm all alone in the lab. I'm not trained for this. I can't help him. He's gushing blood. Oh, God. Feed. Unstable. Feed. Status 2, listen to me. Unstable. Yes, sir. Patch me into your monitors. I want to see this. Y yes, sir. Sir, should I go in and help him? Uh, no. Not yet, Status. But he must be in terrible pain, sir. Yes, I think you're right. Look at that. Um... You said you're all alone in lab two, did you, Status? Yes, sir. And I'm not trained. Oh! God, he's got, like, spikes coming out of him. Right out of his hands. What should I do? Stay calm, Status. Do you have access to the patient's booth? Yes, sir, I do. 
then you should go in there and try to help the poor man. Yes, I'll do that, sir, if you say. Be sure to close the security door after you enter status, just to be safe. Good lad. You, you, come with me. Yes, sir. Anything wrong, sir? Could be. Don't know. Something. Just stick close. The lab worker here, what's his name? Uh, not sure. Cow or coal or something. He's new, sir. Just started today. New? Then he shouldn't be in this section. He's dead. He's dead. Sir, what is that? Jeez, what has happened what here? Happened? Good lord. Logan. That's my patient, Logan. God, what's happened to He's him? He's murdered the boy. In his hands. He looks like a mad animal. Look like claws. It's a real mess. Sir, we'll get guns and blow the thing away. It's too late for that. Too late for anything. Magnificent. If I knew what you were really up to, Professor, I might be very upset with you. Possibly. I've helped you create a monster. No, not a monster exactly. Devil with that. It's a mindless murdering animal. Um, yes. But we can make it behave. Behave? Good God, man. It slaughtered an innocent boy in there. Then it came after me and the guards. Straight through the blasted window as if it wasn't there. You must have been terrified, Doctor. You don't know the half of it. But you weren't hurt, so let's not indulge ourselves. Hmm. Logan could have killed us all. I met his eyes for a second, filled with hate and fury. I couldn't tell if it was some animal bloodlust or horror at what we've done to him. Then when his life support system tore it away, he collapsed. Those terrible knives sunk back into his body. And I thanked God for my fortune. So you survived to tell the tales. Now we should consider the boy is dead, Professor. Yes, it's tragic. Whatever could have possessed him to enter that booth? I don't know. He must have seen the danger. But still, we have to answer for it. How so, Doctor? Well, the police, obviously. And what about the boy's family? I don't believe police involvement will be necessary. The boy's relatives can be compensated. Secured, let us say. Hmm? Doctor? I realize you must be feeling a little estranged from me just now. So perhaps it is time to induct you further into my program. But I will require your explicit trust. Do I have that, Cornelius? I don't know. There's a lot that I will explain. Your trust, Doctor. Offer, and I shall accept. Well, okay then, if you want. I trust you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Tell me, Doctor. Are you familiar with the term homo superior? As in master race or something? To some extent, but no. I mean, mutant. Mutant? Mutant? Mutant humans? Mutants aren't human, Dr. Cornelius. They are homo superior. Logan is not human. He is, therefore, homo superior. Look here. Do you see? What do you think? I see a wild beast that was once a man. Very well, Cornelius. Yet I see a man as ever he was, but with his subconscious stripped bare, cut from his soul, and scored to the bone. Our friend Logan has come into his own at last. Um, Professor, the experiment, the adamantium bonding process, are you saying it mutated Logan into this infernal thing? No, Doctor. You must understand that this infernal thing is what Logan has always been. A determinately violent individual plummeting his way through a purposeless life. One day distinguished from the next only by changing patterns of bruises and blood from last night's drunken fights. But then, inexplicably, the wounds are healed and gone before noon and his first beer. I doubt he even suffers hangovers. All his years, Logan has endured this, suffering a destiny that tore at him from his guts outward, battling a fate decreed him by nature. He became a government agent and was ideally suited to the danger of the work. He had nothing to lose, not even his godforsaken life. Shot, stabbed, and beaten in the course of duty, recklessly seeking the honor of dying for his country. How pitifully desperate he must have become. Yes, indeed. 
but now his demon is free, released by the intervention of Experiment X. Thus, the double ID is supplanted by the super ego and all of Logan's primal instincts are focused and resolved. And what you're looking at right now, Doctor, is the most formidable tactical weapon ever conceived. Yes, the knives then and his hands, pure adamantium. Have you not heard a word I've said? They're not knives, Cornelius. They're claws. Security! We need the gas now! Lab 5! Haste! Haste! Copy. Oh my god. Necessary action, Doctor. You saw what happened. Yes. But, I mean, can't we treat him better than this? He's still human in some way, isn't he? In some way. But your earlier description was more apt, perhaps. A mindless, murdering animal, I believe you said? Guess so. And this is why I'm depending on you, good doctor. Logan must be restructured now. Trained. Then reprogrammed. You can do all of this. Manipulation of the mindless, Dr. Cornelius. It is your calling. Claws bound, still human, mindless, restructured, trained, and cardio limiter, Heinz. Upward conditioning of Mr. Logan, then can't be countered in his reformed state. His brutish impulses being greatly exaggerated since the adamantin bonding. And this will correct the situation, hmm? No. Hardly. Set three of six, Miss Hines. It should give us a real knowledge of Logan's stress dynamics since his operation. I hope this wasn't a waste of my time, Dr. Cornelius. We should have begun reorientation by now. What's the point of this weapon if we can't control him? You can control him somewhat. Here, use this. It's a direct link. With this, I can speak to him? Control him? Suggest, perhaps. Control? I don't know. What you'll see on the big screen will be in direct relation to your spoken word. Logan. You are in my control, Logan. Yeah, like that. You shouldn't use his former name, sir. We're trying to eradicate that stuff. Yes, quite so. Miss Hines, we'll need an exacting flow of the Adrenergics. It's all in, sir. I programmed it myself. Splendid. You are a beast. You are an animal born to serve. You have one master, and it's me. You will do anything I say. Uh, Professor? Yes, what? We haven't begun yet, sir. The machine isn't on. Then please get on with it, Doctor. Subject, Experiment X. Set three of six. Adamantum cell bonding process. Stress in Egram block and block complex. Have all that? Yes. Proceed, Miss Hines. Pardon my suggestion, sir, but it might be advisable to avoid any directives to the patient during these tests. The psychotechnics of the situation Thank you for your suggestion, Doctor. Have you any more? No. No, I guess not. Oh! Ah! Overload! Hines, do something! Trying... there. What is that? What is on the screen? We're getting some sort of internal feedback, sir. The imaging is so powerful, it's burning the circuits. Something is wrong here. Um, okay, shut it down. We'll check the data preps. Miss Hines, shut it down. I... I can't, sir. There's no response. This is unbelievable. Cornelius, stop it now! I can't. We're not sending. We're receiving. Hines, can you control this in any way? No, sir. I can't do a thing. Oh, pain. Doctor, help. Good Lord. You, you pain to me. No. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Security. Please not me. No, sir. No. Logan, leave that girl, you animal. This is your master. You are a beast in my control. You will have no will but to serve me. You have no... <sighs> Stay back. Guards, tranquilize Logan now. We might hit the professor. Just shoot! 
<sighs> professor! Yes, are you all right? I, 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 I didn't hit the professor, sir. I know it. Kill him. We must kill Logan now. He is a wild animal. We cannot control him. Give me that gun. I can't do that, sir. Professor, calm down now. You don't know what you're saying. That beast tried to kill me. Didn't you see? Yes, yes, of course. But you're in a state of shock right now. That's all. Guard, get some medical staff in here. Yes, sir. Doctor? It's all right, Heinz. He's totally sedated. That's some sort of impulse, a uh, reflex. It's a good thing it didn't happen when he attacked you, Professor. Oh, God, look at the screen. Um, well, I guess we've all had enough for today. Turn off the monitors, Miss Hines. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, sir. Hines, Cornelius. So this might be the big day, huh? We're hoping so, sir. Good. Good. Dr. Cornelius, what do you have for me? Well, we believe we've overcome the superendocrine gland problem. How so? A simple trabeculae matrix. It was staring us in the face all the time. But you've got it now. We believe so, sir. Excellent. Have you released Logan's feed cables? No, not yet. Then do it now, Dr. Cornelius. Wranglers, release the cables. Copy. And haul them in. Well, Doctor, show me what Weapon X can do. Set. This is two of six. Defense. Set. Everything check? Cameras? Fine. Where's that coffee I asked for? Coming, Doctor. Doctor Cornelius? Yes, sir. Mr. Logan seems to be covered in... ichor. Sheep's blood, sir. Quicker scent. I see. Ingenious. Lovely. Where's that coffee? Your coffee, sir. Thanks. Danish? Sure. He's been out in Sub-Zero for ten minutes. Can't we get on with this? We are following procedure, Miss Hines. Readings. Heartbeat. Pressure. All okay. He can hear them. Yes. No adrenal rise. Odd. Release the gate. When were the animals last fed? Don't know. Wranglers? Copy. About six days ago. Well, gee. I can have my Danish. He's not reacting. Give him a chance, Cornelius. I mean, there's no pressure rise. Is he alive? Yes, of course. Good God. He's not moving. Do you have data for me? Everything reads. He's just not reacting. Blast! Is it physical? The claws? No, I'm sure not. Then why doesn't he use them, Doctor? Up the response column now. They'll rip him to shreds. He won't be able to heal if he's in bloody pieces. I'm getting no response. We've lost it. They're eating him alive. Wait, it's coming through. The epinephrine's rising. 86, 90%, 95, he's fighting back. No. Listen to that feral roar. The bloodlust. Gentlemen, we have succeeded. I don't think that sound is bloodlust, Professor. I think it's pain. Splendid. It'll make him all the more savage. Readings, Cornelius. Heart rate just shut off the scale. Phenomenal stress level. He could burn out. Is that likely? I don't know. The metabolics. It's beyond human. And far more bestial than he's slaughtering. What a perfect choice Logan was. Professor, can't we stop it now? Save the animals? I think not, madam. I'm enjoying this far too much. Let the animals save themselves. Professor, I've got a fluorescent analysis now. Would you like to see it? Yes. Can you hold that? Then give me a re-emission on the osteograph. One second. And bring it into either hand. Yes. Look at that. The perfect synthesis of human trabeculae and adamantium. Bone. Bonded to the hardest metal in the world. Inside the body of a berserker. Logan. The perfect fighting machine. The perfect killing machine. Professor. There's some excessive distortion in the metacarpals. 
Could be the cause of pain upon extrusion. You'll look into that? Yes, Professor. Good. Then take us back to the battlefield. Program complete. We seem to have run out of wolves. Total massacre. Splendid. Couldn't be better. And look, I think he wants more. Do we have more? No. Ugh. Pity. <laughs> Good God, he's roaring like an animal. Ah, and you thought it was just pain that made him cry out, Cornelius? No, the wolves would kill for food. Or territory, perhaps. But this man, this living weapon, his passion is the fear of his prey and the find relish in the odor of blood. Despite his original protestations, I know we've done him a great favor. His most bestial needs are about to exceed his most primitive dreams. In our service, of course. You can turn him off now, Doctor. Wranglers. Copy. Bring Logan in. Cancel that order, Cornelius. Cancel. Stand by. Sorry, Professor, I thought we were done for the day. We are. Then... Leave Logan out for the night. I like the idea of him resting in his own gore. But it's 15 degrees below. All the better. Toughen him up, eh? Ha! You can monitor his healing from here, can you not? Yes, of course. Splendid. Then we've accomplished much this day. Good evening to you all. Uh, good night, Professor. How are you all today? And how was our Mr. Logan? Functioning, sir. Good. You may bring him in now. We have many more trials for Weapon X. How are we proceeding, Dr. Cornelius? Spinal codes are in. Just a matter of final sensor graphs now. And the distribution? About a three mile radius, sir. But that is so very limited, Doctor. Is that all you can give me? Professor, if you want a puppet, you gotta have strings. Yes, indeed. But my design called for a ten mile radius. Yeah, I know that. The batteries are just way too heavy. I don't know why we couldn't have stayed with the on-off system anyway. We didn't need batteries for that. I will have my way on this, Cornelius. A 10 mile radius. Okay, load him down, see if I care. You can turn him into a traveling radio station if you like. Your descent is noted, Doctor. But let's not be testy, hmm? Whatever. Staff, those braces can only keep the incisions open for so long, you know. Yes, Doctor. The flesh is actually forming around the clamps here. Then work faster, man. Yes, sir. Short fiber, right stem is on ninth. Short fiber, give me the right stem. Computer indicates leakage of semen and marrow into the intracellular fluids. Good God, he's coming around. Don't get jumpy, Professor. We have to keep him floating so we can trace the relay flux in his nervous system. You mean he's conscious? Yeah, partly. Add two pheno B staff. Yes, Doc. So he can feel what we're doing to him. Hmm. Most of it, yeah. Poor geezer's in a lot of pain. Pain is a principle of life, Dr. Cornelius. Yeah, sure. Not that I subscribe entirely to that dictum. Four pheno B staff. And keep him from shaking, will ya? Readings, Heinz. Sensor cortex monitor is overloaded, sir. There are no readings. Poor geezer. So the sutures are all healed, are they? Not quite, Professor. But enough for this purpose. We could wait a few minutes if you prefer. No, no. Let's get on with it, Cornelius. Okay. The cables aren't a problem. They can be reduced later. The power source and receivers are temporary. We'll try to compact the boxes, but I can't guarantee that. For anything over, say, 150 yards, we'll need the helmet device to pull in the signal. Um, other than that, we're in business. And what of the range, Cornelius? A little over nine miles, sir. Hmm. <laughs> And the control console here. It isn't from my design. If you wanted the extra power, sir, we had to modify. Staff, show the professor the layout of your top board. Sure, okay. It's easy, look. You got these codes here based on your data. You just press them in sequence and the levers are control. I understand. Yeah, forward, back, like that. Give us a brief demo, staff. It isn't necessary. Nah, sure, I can do that. What? You got full articulation on the claws. Like, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. 
this little piggy. Yes, I've got the idea, staff. And your entertainments are entirely out of place. Oh, sure, right. Sorry, Professor. I hardly need instructions to operate my own devices. Yes, I see. Watch. You see, Cornelius, how the naturalistic movements imitate the human. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yes, and how discrete adjustments create the effect of... <clears throat> what the next? He likes the walkies. Way to go. Shut up! Blast you all! Sorry, sir. Cornelius, your staff are fools and ignoramuses. Yeah, wrong word, eh? Okay, boys, that's it. Take a break. Get out of here. Yes, get out, buffoons. I've never been so insulted. Lighten up, Professor. They did a good job. You got what you wanted. Here, have this. And what say we call it a day, huh? No. The experiment isn't over, Cornelius. I have to know if it's safe. He's safe, he's wired and shut down. Let it go, Professor. If I am safe, you fool, me. Logan tried to choke me to death, remember? Look, when the power's on, you got him by the tail. When it's off like now, he's just dead me. You wanted that. You got that. But you have to be sure, right? So go spit in his eye. Then you can be sure. I've had enough of this circus for one day, Professor. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll send the Wranglers to clean up the mess. He's within 100 yards of target now, at three minutes. Rather impressive. Camera five on subject. Switch to camera eight and bring him in close. Switching, 95 yards, 23, 27. This is the fastest yet, even with the extra weight. He's downwind, he has the scent. Claw extrusion, right hand, some blood evident. We need some kind of terminals there. Something to keep the flesh apart. Make a note, Heinz. Yes, doctor. Less than 50 yards now. Target is coming towards Mr. Logan. Heart rate up. Adrenal rise with carpal flux. Left claw extrusion. Camera 10, please. Switching. This is it. Keep it running, Heinz. We won't get a second chance. Ah, Mr. Logan, set. Uh, I mean, experiment X, set 12. Stimulus response, quarry one, duration from zero, four minutes, and 21 seconds. Oh, superb, bravo. It's utterly impeccable killing. The time has come, Cornelius. The weapon is primed and perfect. Yeah, that was pretty hot stuff, Professor, but I don't know. The helmet, it's cumbersome, it cuts his vision, 30% both sides. And the battery packs, they're nearly 10 pounds a piece. Everything's so clunky and in the way. It's not optimum. It's not the way we planned. Shall I retract his claws, Doctor? Yeah, go ahead, Hyde. But we do have the weapon in control, Doctor. That is what we planned. Yeah, I don't know. Bring Logan in, boys. I just think with a little more psychosis- No! No more psycho this and that. I want action now. Action. Chopping a grizzly into bloody pieces. That's not enough action for you? I didn't create this weapon to be some imbecilic game warden, Cornelius. Yeah? So, what are you saying here? Logan is ready, but it isn't all cut and thrust, Professor. A bit more time, you know? To eliminate some of the kinks in the system, that's all I'm asking. No! Logan is ready. For what? The great test, Doctor. What is the most dangerous game of all? Bingo Tiger. With a stick up its man, of course. Man! Yeah, well, we don't have any stock in that right now, sir. Then we'll have to get some in, won't we? You're not serious, of course. On the contrary, I'm deadly serious. Do you know what you're saying? I always know what I'm saying, Cornelius. So I'll brook no arguments. I'll be in the control room. But... The professor said to remove the dome, but keep them wired on the points. So, should we leave the batteries on? Yeah. And set the inline alarm, right? Guess so. Uh, 
I don't know about this, Heinz. I don't like the sound of this right now. It's like... First I'm told we're creating a kind of super soldier from Experiment X. Then it turns out he's some sort of mutant animal thing. So the adamantum bonding sends him cuckoo. But the professor takes me around, pulls me into his game. Got sucked in good there. I know it. Oh yeah. I got virtually blackmailed into this whole affair, you know. No, you don't, no. But it's like, what's this thing gonna do? Is the weapon gonna protect us from the commies or something? Why don't you take your coffee break now, John? I'm on duty till six, Beans. Like some kind of assassin? Take a break, John. Okay, jeez. I'm not too large into soul searching like that. But I got some responsibility to, to, you know, stuff. I ain't got murder inside me, Hines. Not like the professor. Right, that's got it. Set the alarm now. Okay. What? If you need me, doctor, I will support you in anything you need to do. <laughs> the alarm. On source, Heinz. Lab 2! Mr. Logan! Oh my god, he's... Good lord! Professor! Professor! What is it, Cornelius? You maniac! How could you? What? You're insane! What? Uh... This is not my doing, Cornelius. I am not in control. Not in control! All security at Zone 2. Weapon X has escaped. Professor. My emergency shutdown is out. Use your monitor controls. Shut off the power. I'm trying, Cornelius. It's not working. We got three men down and two active. Can we shoot? Of course, Max. Shoot! What happened to your failsafe, Professor? It isn't working, I tell you. Sir, how could this have happened? Logan was harnessed up. How could he? It's not over, sir. The tranquilizers, not effective. This is crazy. Can't you do something? My system is down. Down. I've got no control over Logan. Then who does? Yes. Who does indeed. This is an emergency. I lost a man in zone two. I need an advisory on this. Uh, so advise somebody. Professor, can you seal the corridor from your remote? Seal? Yes, contain Logan inside zone two. I, I... Nothing is functioning here, Cornelius. Will one of you give me a directive here, sir? We got a lot of trouble. Can you close any part of Zone 2, Professor? Sir, Mr. Logan is moving out of 2, approaching Zone 3 and D block. Security, move to D in Zone 3. Entering the service tunnels. This is the Professor speaking. How are you? I am quite fine myself, thank you. Huh? What's he say? Doc, I've got five men down. We're gonna need more than tranquilizers to handle this situation. Are you aware of what's happening at this time? Doc, you copy? Uh, yes, security, I copy. We can't take him out with artillery, sir. Understand? Y yes That is correct. Experiment X is out of my control. Running amok, you might say. Heinz, who's he talking to? Computer shows exterior unit, sir. But he's forgotten to turn off his intercom. Precisely. Killing everyone in sight. Hmm? Yes. Yes, that's just that, you see. Logan is fully harnessed, yet my control panels are inactive. Doc, for crying out loud, you gotta okay the weaponry. I mean, I got men down there popping pea shooters. Freeze! Then get them out of there, man, before it's too late. <laughs> Security, zone three! Get out of the tunnels! And whilst it's little concern overall, we are losing our martial guard somewhat precipitately. Professor, I need your clearance to issue men firepower. Given this, do you read me, Professor? I'd like to ask, do you have a hand in these occurrences? He ain't listening to me. I think he's off his trolley. Sir, I think I found something important. What? Mr. Logan has breached three zones and is now within 200 yards of the professor's laboratory at 3 and C block. 
Jeez. And it's not coincidence, sir. I've traced his movements from the holding bay at Lab 2. He has made a definite path to the professor's quarters. Respond. Respond if you can. Don't know, Hines. Don't seem right. How could Logan know where the professor is? Mr. Logan has shown uncanny tracking ability, sir. Yeah, but that was in a controlled situation, Hines. And who says this isn't one, sir? I see, I see. As in, ah. Uh, sort of biting the hand that feeds, ah. Uh. Ha! Hmm, a clean sweep, as it were. Yes. There is just one thing, um, let me ask. Should I leave now, or should I refuge here? Well, as you put it, Weapon X clears the dead wood. Security, this is Cornelius. Break out the big stuff for your men. Is the professor okay, sir? No, but he won't mind, believe me. I didn't hear you. There's a... Yeah! Make that on the double. Okay, security? Ah, help me, help, help! Ah. Move it, move it, move it! Red light, red light! Zone three and C block, move! Good lord, you got to do something. Security force is almost there, sir. They should handle it. This is it. Take both doors at once. Five seconds. Go, go, go! But we've got to help him too, haven't we? Hines? Get the professor out of here! Okay, professor. We got you. Here we are. He tried to kill me! My glasses! I can't see! I've got them, sir. Here. Ah, my hand! Kill him! Kill! Destroy Weapon X! Did you get the professor out? Did you get the professor out? Answer me, somebody! What's going- Professor secured, he's okay. This is a massacre. Fall back! Fall back! Targets all over the- No clear shot. Losing men! Get back from him! Too late! Dozen body shots. No effect. Bloody massacre! Try to stay still, Professor. Lay down. I'm bleeding to death. Stretcher's coming, sir. Lay down. Please, work. I don't need a stretcher, you fool. It's my hand that's missing, not my leg. What? Oh, no. Oh, goodness. <laughs> sir, let me get your hands off me. I... Get off! Professor. Professor. Ah, jeez. Cornelius, help me. Get me out of here. We're going to have to stop that bleeding. Uh, we need a tourniquet. Doctor, give me your tie. Uh, yeah, uh, hold tight, Professor. Uh, uh, oof. Try to keep it raised. That should hold it for a while till... We must get you to the infirmary. Can you walk? I can run, Cornelius. Get me away from here. But not to the infirmary. We must get to the adamantium reactor hold. Yes, yes! Sir, you must be seen to, sir. What? Why? It's the only safe place from the weapon. But security took care of Logan, Professor. Don't be stupid, Cornelius. They didn't stand a chance. Security at Zone 3, respond. Sir, we're, we're all... Oh, God. Heavy fire, sir. Couldn't stop him. What's your status? Nothing left, sir. Sir? Sir, he's, he's coming. For me... This is it, Cornelius. Break the seal. You will be safe here. Yeah, if you don't count radiation burns. Heinz, get that gun. Get that gun. Yes, sir. Bolt the door immediately, Doctor. Not me, you idiot, Heinz. What can I do with it? I... Sorry, give it to Cornelius. What's going on here, Professor? Just what do you think I'm going to do with this rifle? Fire it, Doctor. The first opportunity. You may not be able to kill Logan, but if you could shoot away the power on that harness... You should stop him. This is ridiculous. Even if Logan is still alive, the systems are down. He can't... The system is not down. It is in the control of another. Yeah? Like who, for crying out loud? It is not your place to know that, Cornelius. You've got some gall, Professor. Look at you. You're bleeding buckets here. Jeez. I gotta bandage you up. Dead wood, Cornelius. I am considered dead wood. Dead meat, more like it. You're delirious, Professor. All this stuff, you're in shock. You are ever the fool, aren't you? Uh, uh, that door doesn't keep Logan back. Hold still. You will soon discover what shock is. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, well, you know. 
I think the quicker we can get you to the- Hines! Yes, sir? Stop that infernal dickering! I'm sorry, sir, but the computer shows Mr. Logan to be fully active. I knew that, blast it! He's in tunnel two, sir, moving in this direction. Get away, woman! Let me get there! Is this connected to the main computers? It is the main computer, sir. Yes, yes, of course. Pardon, sir, that's not a central code, that's Heinz. Let it go. It's out of our hands. And I don't think we're part of the game anymore. Huh, it is I. The Professor. Please answer. It is the Professor here. Are you surprised that Logan didn't kill me? Why? Why are you doing this to me? I am not part of the rabble. You must know that. Answer me, please. This is the Professor. Please respond. Oh, God. I beg you, please answer. Don't let me die here! We don't have to die, Professor. None of us. This gun, I can use it. Please answer me. I can shoot off the power packs, like you said. Please answer. I can... What's that noise? I think Mr. Logan has found us, sir. Those sounds outside. No. It's in the walls. It's coming through. What? The power's down. Help me. Help me, please. Blast you! I don't know who he thinks he's talking to, and I don't care. We gotta get out of this, time. You scared? Yes, sir. Very. Are you? Yeah. To death. Logan's inside now. He's gotta be. Sir, with the power off, the turbines for the adamantium reactor shut down. Jeez, Hines, that's the last of our worries. <laughs> reactor. I mean, the turbines maintain the adamantium coolant, sir. Uh. All dead wood. Shut off. It will reduce to the charged compound, sir. I'll burn up. Dead wood. We must purge the core, dead sir. Wood. Or we could just blow up. Blow. Die. Die. <laughs> Die. Shoot him! My god! Uh, shoot! Shoot! Look, Professor. He's faltering. I don't know. I think he's had it. I mean, he's too weak to attack. He's lost a lot of blood. That blood is what's left of our security guard, you fool! He's controlled and programmed to kill us all! Use the gun now! While well, we still have a chance! But he ain't even moving, Professor. Do as I command, Cornelius! Oh! I hit him! I got him! Jeez! The power, Cornelius! You have to get his power packs! Shoot away the receivers! He's still alive! That's incredible! He's- Shoot, you fool! <laughs> you blasted idiot! Cornelius! Oh, God! <laughs> idiot! Idiot! Stop, sir, stop! We must go back! Get away from me! We can't just leave him! He's dead, you stupid woman! I couldn't help him even if I wanted to! I must get to the reactor! So stop your sniveling and pull yourself together! I need your help now! Yes, yes, I'm... I'm with you, sir. If we could purge the core, we could at least save the complex. The labs and data records. Of course, Heinz. After all, I know this man. What could be more important than a memory, a dream, than the memory of Experiment X? Dream of dying. The containment is cracking already, Professor. We must release the fission gate. Yes, but it is a matter of getting Logan into the exhaust pit first. Sir, there's not much time left. I need a law of some kind. Hmm. He would be incinerated in seconds. I'm sorry, sir. Yes. That is all too true, Heinz. But let us take a moment. Miss Heinz, I know you've worked long and hard for our experiment, X. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You have been a real boon to the good Dr. Cornelius, too. Oh. Oh, poor Dr. Cornelius. Yes. He gave his life for this project. <laughs> Why? I dare say you would do the same, would you not, Miss Hines? Sir, give your life. No, sir, I wouldn't want to die. It is required, madam. What are you saying, Professor? Bait. Oh, no. Why would you want to hurt me, pre Professor? Oh, oh no, please. Uh, uh, don't. Uh, uh, uh. Break your neck, dear lady. Because I want you to scream and yell and draw the beast into the pit. Come on, woman. Scream, will you? Think of the horror of it all. Use your imagination. There. There you have it. System control operating. Computer, give current thermal breakdown. 230,000 and 
70,000 cubic feet. Advise on those numbers. Open vision gate at once. Begin purge sequence and open manual control to me. Control open. Purge begin. Come. Come, creature, into the pit with you. I'll crisp you like bacon, like the mutant meat you are. Mr. Logan, I don't know if you can understand me, sir. Um, good God, woman, don't beg. You are living the last few moments of your pointless existence. Don't waste them cowering and pleading to a mindless animal. I can't stand physical pain. Physical pain, please. I understand. Grotesque. How undignified. Uh, kill me quickly. Please, I beg you. You don't matter to me. Huh? I... Uh. What? Oh, he did it! He's opened the vision gate! Run, Mr. Logan, run! Discharge. 240,000 megatherms at 70,000 cubic feet. Velocity, 2,000 foot-pounds. Current rate... 700 foot-pounds per second. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Uh, this is the professor. Experiment X is destroyed. And I, I am his destroyer. Do you hear me? I beat you, you treacherous son of a... 600 foot-pounds per second. 580. 550. 500. I served your every demand. 400. Zero, zero. You turned against... 300. My God! 200 thermal rate non-critical. You, you, you're controlling the vision gate, aren't you? Purge sequence canceled. Is there nothing you cannot do? Uh, good God in heaven, you're still transmitting to him. You're controlling a corpse, a walking dead man. Ah! <laughs> Am I dead? Is that what you've done to me? Dead? Walking dead man? Am I? You are an animal. I am Logan! Ah, ah, ah. Logan! I am a man! And you are the animal. Uh, security! Huh? Security! Help me! Security, for God's sake! Now we both got our paddles bollocksed. Do you think that makes us even? Uh, uh, uh. Well, it don't. Huh? No, uh, no, no. Now, we're square. Got that jump. Mr. Logan, I don't know if you can understand me. Use your imagination! Think of the horror of it all! Can't think. Yes, that is all too true. Must have been some party. He's lost a lot of... Yeah. I'd like to see the other guy. Uh, damn you. Uh, Please respond. I can hear you. Logan is still alive. You bet. But security took care of Logan, Professor. This is a joke, right? But Bloody massacre. We'll be, pal. Mr. Logan has shown uncanny abilities. Yeah. And I'm buck naked, too. So who is this already? Precisely. Killing everyone in sight. Running a mama, I might say. Whoa. This ain't no joke. Are you aware of what's happening at this time? Okay, game's over. How are you? Who's pulling this stunt? Answer me. I lost a man here too! Some kind of random playback. This is crazy. Nobody's controlling I am this. not in control. I'm alone here. Can we shoot? I gotta get out. Weapon X has escaped. I am not in control. Picking up smoke goes on. Hum of heavy machinery. Industrial. Maybe military. I don't like army. 
they don't like me. So I'm out of here before I get enlisted. This place is a maze. Or a tomb. And it ain't military. It's too sharp. These computers are Buck Rogers. Body. A man all smashed up. What went on in this place? He's been cut. Bad. Three in the gut. Brutal. I... I know this man. In a memory. A dream. A dream of... Dying. This place stinks of it. Hanging in the air like heat. But who did the killing? Got blood on me. No wounds. My blood? Or did I knife this guy here? What'd he do to me? And that hand back there. Severed. Hand. Come. Come, preacher. I don't know if you can understand me, sir. Into the pit. I can't stand pain. Physical pain. Please. Please, I beg you. Kill me quickly. Run, Mr. Logan. Tortured me, tore up my mind. I gotta get away. I gotta get away. I'm running. I'm running in a dream. I got sticks for legs and my feet are putty. Something's behind me. It's moving with me, like a living shadow. It's at my heels. And if I slow down, it'll get me. I'll suffocate in it. In its darkness. And I won't be able to scream, or yell, or fight it off. Cause it'll be inside me, under my skin. In my guts, inside my bones, I'm running like a truck. I'm barreling truck, and I'm uphill with a full load, and the thing's behind me, and it's gaining all the time. I'm pumping and pumping, but losing ground. It's grabbing at me, snatching at my veins like ropes and pulling me back. Tendons like wires, like a puppet. Fingers pulling through my ribs, muscles stretching, bones bending back. I'm running, I'm running. It's tearing at me, dragging me back into its darkness. Endless nightmare. Pitching waves running in the night. Liquid. Like black blood. I can't get away. It's at my shoulder and it's cutting me with spikes. It's breathing into me and I'm sucking its hot breath. Stench of death in my mouth. Lungs heaving. Fingers clawing. Legs pumping. And I can't get away. But I must. Run. Run forever, fight forever, never give in. The beast, out of the pitch black, it's coming. It's free, and it wants revenge. It's gonna rip me, turn me inside out. I'm running, I'm running into unending darkness, and it's behind me. It's everywhere, everywhere I am. Don't give up, can't go on. Don't give up, knees giving in, crystal shot. Don't give up, every thrust. Blood and fire, bones, heavy, dense like lead, shot through like steel in the heart, came and in, don't give up, weight under the weight, the weight of the beast. It's extraordinary, is it not, Cornelius? creature of such power, shaken by his own shadow, driven by fear of himself. The evidence pulling through despite it all. Exterior camera signs. Switching. You think so, hmm? Then we shall see what we shall see. Yeah, I guess we will, Professor. I mean, he's still standing, isn't he? He didn't buckle. He didn't give in. He didn't even retract his claws when we gave him the power to do it, you know? Hush, Cornelius. He has found the snow leopard. Siberian tiger, sir. Yes, thank you, madam. We could have set this up better. How do you mean, doctor? If Logan had had to seek it out, you know, 
hunt the thing down just based on instinct, to kill it or confront it or whatever, instead of the tiger just being there, it'd have been more telling, I think. Yes, I suppose you are right. But still, it is an acceptable scenario for one such as Logan's simplistic perception. Look at that. Logan's right in there. He's just as wild as before. He may seem so, Doctor, but in the past few days, Weapon X has been changed irrevocably. His savagery is now tempered by ego and ratiocination. Any hesitation, a moment of fear, more caution, and he will be undone. Yeah, like, literally, right? It has been necessary that Logan should not know of his indestructible skeleton. Won't it help him if he gets disemboweled, Professor? No. He could learn it all the hard way. It's true. Camera four, Hans. Yes, Doctor, switching. He's getting the advantage, Professor. But not so long ago, Weapon X beheaded a grizzly bear without hesitation. Without so much as a tussle. That is what I call getting the advantage. You gotta have some faith, Professor. Look, I'll lay you a hundred on Logan. What do you think of that? Give me full on six, Heinz. Come on, wake up. Uh, switching. This is not a game, Cornelius. Telling me, that slash could have gutted him. And I'd be out of a C note. You don't see, Doctor. That was a feint. Logan is drawing in for the kill. Wow. Closer, Heinz. Closer. Yes, sir. Look! A magnificent blow. No reading, sir. Mr. Logan is offline for this. Yeah, right, right. Jeez! Another one. Straight to the heart. Son of a gun's more brutal than ever. So, what do you say then, Professor? Indeed, Cornelius. Remarkable. His instincts and reflexes, though perhaps more pragmatic, seem quite undiminished. And his ferocity is still unparalleled. Pity I couldn't get you to make that bet, huh? I would not sully the nature of scientific endeavor with wagers, Cornelius. Yeah, well, that's just because you'd have lost a bundle. You underestimated your prize, Professor. Logan was set up. We gave him a chance to escape, but he didn't run. Instead, he turned around and brutalized the lot of us. Then we jammed a psyche with his fear of mutinism. Didn't phase him. I'd say he came through A1, wouldn't you? Yes, yes, and yet he failed to kill Heinz, an act of mercy that leaves doubt still in my mind. Ah, that's just because Heinz was never a threat to Logan, Professor. It's just like we proved. He'll only kill if threatened with death or, or, uh, or out of hunger. Yeah, or out of hunger. And like, who'd want to eat Heinz, huh? Yes, all right, Cornelius. I suppose we should consider the experiment a success, flawed though it may be. If I may say so, Doctor, I think Mr. Logan only killed you because of that accidental shooting, sir. I don't think he would have attacked you otherwise. Huh? Huh. That's right. Thanks, Heinz. Hmm. And have the Wranglers pick up Logan, will ya? Yes, sir. So what have we got here, Professor? Logan thinks he's killed just about all of us getting to you, the focus of his vengeance. But now he knows he ain't a human. And with that, he knows it was you that harnessed his dark secret. Indeed. So he had to destroy me, did he not? And in the act of killing his creator, his once inculpable salvagery is transformed into the cunning of a ruthless killer. I savor these events, Cornelius. Yes, well, you did kind of hedge your bets a little bit, you know. What? What do you mean, Cornelius? Wranglers, Mr. Logan should be brought to D-Block this time. We know, Hyde. You know, you know, making up that stuff about how you were actually working for somebody else? Some great power or something? Yes, uh, quite. Like you were just a stooge or a flunky, instead of the genius behind Experiment X. Yes, that was, um, a mere psychological ruse, Cornelius. Easy, boy. Easy. It was good. This will only hurt a bit. Setting yourself up for your own murder, but then playing at being betrayed by the real creator of Weapon X in the end? Easy, boy. Working for sympathy? Testing Logan to see if he'd reason that you weren't the real threat? Clever. <laughs> Tricky. Indeed, Cornelius. A dramatic ploy that proved a great deal about the nature of the beast, hmm? Yeah. Real cute. Say, where's Logan? Off camera, sir. I can see that, Heinz. Put him back on camera, will you? Switching, sir. Security, where's Mr. Logan? Wranglers have got him, Heinz. Wranglers, where's Mr. Logan? Wranglers, do you copy? Oh. Security, what's wrong? What does the cyan for? Don't know, sir. Checking. This could be serious. Uh, shut down Logan's transponder, Heinz. Yes, sir. Oh, dear. 
No response. The transponder is an override, sir. Security. From an outside source. I ask again. Sorry, sir. Some confusion. Breach in D-block. Suggest you get out, sir. Professor, do you copy? Do you copy? Hello? Pines? You there? Cornelius? Anybody? Doctor? Yeah, Hines. What's up? Um, I was wondering, can I talk to you? Sure. It's just that I keep thinking about Mr. Logan. Yep, don't we all? And what we're doing, yeah. And that, well, before I came here, was Mr. Logan here? No, I don't know. What do you mean? I mean, did Mr. Logan volunteer for this? Uh, no. Was Mr. Logan abducted then? Uh, yeah. I ain't too proud of this, Hines, but yeah. We are doing something bad, aren't we, sir? Well, Mr. Logan was forced into this. I don't know about forced, Hines. See if you'd listen to the professor. It's like, this is all kind of preordained. It's like Logan's destiny or something. How could the professor know Mr. Logan's destiny, sir? I don't know, to be honest. All I see is him suffering. The professor seems to enjoy causing him pain. It's like torture, sir. Yeah, well, some guys, they got the worst destinies, you know? Hey, don't cry, Heinze. I'm sorry. That was a lousy thing to say. Look, this poor slob doesn't have much of a life anyway. He's a mutant. The professor says he ain't even human. He is human, sir. You can't tell me that you don't see it in his eyes. You can see he's a man who's being turned into a monster. I don't know what to tell you, Heinz. I'm going on what the professor said. Maybe anything other than that is out of my league. I think the professor is a liar, sir. Yeah, maybe. I wish I'd have never become involved with Experiment X, sir. Yeah, me too, I guess. Come on, cheer up, Heinz. It'll be over soon. Routine. That's what it was supposed to be. A routine story. I'd been sent to cover the possible conflict between loggers and environmentalists. As the chainsaws got ever closer to another old growth forest. Support to protect the thousand year old trees was strong all across British Columbia. The people had another cause to rally behind. Yet unknown to me, nor the loggers fight to keep their jobs that would become the story. Instead, Oh yeah, as far as the, the chat on Facebook, yeah, it's just the Discord. I've got the Discord, um, that's just fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, s I don't know if you guys can hear me talking, I paused it, because uh, I missed my prompt, so I'm on a delay. Um, so yeah, oh, my mic is probably still there, but I didn't think about that.
anyway, I did want to express thank you, Elvis. That was really awesome. Thanks for you guys for hanging out um, and, and, and hanging during this stream. I know there's a lot of other things going on. Um, and, you know, just to let you guys know that tomorrow uh, coffee and cigarettes will be happening at, at 1.30. And I'm having all the guys from Fulcrum on and Peaky. Uh, Peaky is going to join us as well. Uh, can you guys hear better now? Because I'm, I'm trying to explain I'm on a delay. So when I see your guys' chats, um, it's probably seconds, 15 seconds after. Um, cool, cool. At least you guys can hear me now. Uh, not really much to say, but I just figured we'd take five, ten minutes to do like a little bit of chat here on the live, uh, just to stretch this out a little more, maybe. Um, cool, cool. Well, then let me let me let me reiterate uh, on the Albus. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Um, and as far as what I was saying about the Facebook chat, it's just too much. I have the Discord. There's just too many. I'm in and out of too many social medias, and I can't handle all that. So I'm just gonna get rid of that one. It's it's all over the freaking place anyway. Coffee and Crystal, yes, it will be happening tomorrow with the Fulcrum guys. Um, and Peaky, Peaky Arrow, yeah, he's he's a good guy, man. He's a funny dude. Um, I like him. So I'm pretty excited to have them guys on and, and showcase some of their work. And uh, I've already discussed it with them that at first we're going to go over their channel, pull up some of their audio comics and some of their games that they're working on. Apparently Gilbert from Fulcrum did a... Um, audio book as well they don't do audio comics they do audio books but since we share our, our channels are very similar in content i feel like these are some guys that i should really invest some time with and and get to know and and try to join together in a network and we're going to talk about that a little bit tomorrow we're going to go over their content like i said and then about halfway through the stream i'm going to pull up uh, the dart the marvel darth vader series uh, i have the graphic novel version so it's all of them uh, telling in one story and we're going to sort of go over it and I was going to let them pick characters to read during this comic uh, that obviously isn't Darth Vader because I'm, I'm, I'm always you know since it's my channel I'm always going to be the main um, but yeah I've already got my voice effects and everything for da Darth Vader because I did like the first 10 issues of Marvel Star Wars but I was still learning how to do all this stuff so the pacing was off the voice acting was terrible there'd be like 10 seconds of just watching pictures go by and then sound effects. Like, I was just learning the whole editing, um, editing the process. Uh, it was an amazing charity stream he did. I agree. I, I had a lot of fun in it, and uh, a lot of the people that are in his stream, uh, I'm starting to get to know these guys. They're, they got a great community, man. There's never any drama. There's never any BS. It's, it's just being creative and fun, playing games and, and, and building their community a, a lot of people have come over to mine from theirs and i would that's what i mean i'm trying to return the favor and send some people to them because they are one of my favorite gaming channels to watch and hang out with during live streams and harrison's audiobooks he does a lot of star wars audio comics and he's just really good so i'm pretty excited and i think doing the darth vader series with these guys is smart they're they're a big star wars channel i'm a huge star wars fan and i have zero content other than the obi-wan and Obi-Wan was issue seven out of that series, but I, I tried my best to remaster it before I put it back out. So what you're hearing if you did watch the Obi-Wan one is is a remastered version and me trying to trim the audio and making it better. And it still wasn't that great. So I would like to get some Star Wars on the channel, and I think working with these guys would be fantastic. So I'm pretty excited about tomorrow to be going over like the first little bits of the comic with them. And uh, you'll you know in Harrison, he's he's... He's a good guy, man, and he's really talented. He'll he'll probably just read lines and certain voices and things like that as we're live. And we'll all be doing the same thing. Um, but when my experience through the old Star Wars comics is Albus, dude, thank you, man. Um, wow. He did it anyway. Uh and dude, random welcome back, dude. But <laughs> yay. Uh, I guess Reese and Nick and B, everybody's back. Albus, thank you. Roberto also got one. Uh, we were all curious about this, right? So what I was trying to explain to Random about the membership stuff is I'm pretty sure how it works is uh, since you guys, your guy, it looks to me like your guys' memberships ran out and uh, that made you eligible. So the little boxes at the top 
since you guys have already selected um, allow gifting and all that, you are allowed to, you know, it's just automatic at that point. But it is random. Uh, T didn't get it because uh, she's not eligible. Uh, this is what I'm slowly starting to figure out, I think, Albus, is uh, if they're uh, have they had just recently re-upped or they paid for their own, they, they're not eligible for the random when you do it. And if, say, a bunch of people in the chat are 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 eligible or haven't clicked the gift box, um, then it will show up to where they actually have to click the gift box to get it. Um, I've been doing a little bit of reading, and this stuff's kind of hard to understand sometimes. It can get very confusing, and it's like legal jargon, and I'm not good understanding legal jargon. It's not even English. But uh, I think when I've checked just recently, everybody that just got one um, – Everybody that just let me scroll up a little bit. Everybody that just got one, their memberships ran out, so that made them automatically eligible. And since they were very recent, I think they got it. And as far as T, uh, I think T literally re-ups her own automatically every month. So if she's recently just re-upped, which I'm thinking, uh, you just clucked the box. Buckle! So you actually had to click the box. So that's what I mean. I guess maybe I don't understand fully how any of this stuff works and i maybe i should um i just clucked the box but i i thought you would have automatically gotten it yeah yeah t's, t's a member already she she joined a long time ago and um she re-ups on her own so i'm pretty sure how it works is if they've just re-upped they are not eligible for that particular gifting it would have to be either closer to them running out or having to be ran run out and with hers, I think it's all automatic. Uh, automatic! But yeah, yeah, Albus, thank you, man. I, I, really, I really appreciate that, dude. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that at least I'm seeing everybody in the list, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm happy with everybody that got one. That's exactly the people that I want to, to have them. And uh, not just, you know, like random people that are going to come here once or twice and never return. It's not that I'm ungrateful, and it's not that I don't appreciate it. I just feel like it's a waste of, of your efforts uh, on, on a one-timer, you know, yada, yada. But, 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 clocking the chicken boxes. Uh, I'm always a member, but thank you for thinking of me. Uh, Tasha, I'm sorry, T, you don't talk like that, but uh, I, I did just make you talk like that. I'm sorry. I understand this kind of good. Apparently you do. Um, maybe we'll talk about that a little more in DM. Like if you understand it better than I do, then we can DM talk about this. Maybe you can help me try to get it. But I'm pretty sure um, <laughs> I literally tried to get Trandom. That was my only goal. They are always here and B. Yes, yes. Uh, so you didn't – I guess I can ask you then. Did you pick the people in the list or was it random for you? That way, maybe we could help, you know, sort of understand. And Reese, I do, I like Reese a lot, man. He's a, he's a cool guy. Um, I know sometimes he's here, and I know he's kind of a lurker too. And I don't know if it's just people that are in the chat that are eligible for this because he's done this a couple of times, and it was people that weren't even here. Like it's just, you know, people that have been members or that was a member before, um, or a, a troll account that I've made or whatever. Blee blah blue bitty blue, um. But yeah, Albus. I mean, you've said uh that you do this all the time. Am I missing something? Is there something I'm not fully understanding? Um. As far as how the memberships work, I mean, I could be way, way, way off on how any of this works. And, and you guys that are actually in here, uh, I'm looking at eight concurrent viewers, and only three people are chatting. So uh, those of you that are lurking, if you are interested, um, no, it looks like they've all got been claimed. So it looks like, let's see, let's count. Random, Reese, Nick, Robert, and B. Yeah, that was that was the five. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, I guess it sort of just automatically selected them, but let me know if it didn't. Nope, everyone was here earlier, even if lurking or just came on the stream, liked and left a preference. Like and left get pref okay 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 so that it's not it doesn't pull from my pool of subscribers it pulls from people in the chat or people that have lurked or people that have been in the live stream okay 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 i almost face planted just now stupid stupid rug well that's really interesting thank you uh you probably shouldn't tell people those things um 
and you should fix your rug. Rugs aren't stupid. They have no brain whatsoever. Um, you should fix your rug. Either way, I guess we'll go ahead and get back started. I did want to check the poll real quick. Uh, looks like the Resident Evil series remakes out of nine votes is, is taking the cake. Um, Albus voted for if none of them are available in access. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, man. Thank you, thank you. That, that helps me understand a whole lot better on how this works. And the reading that I've done doesn't really help me. So it looks like the Resident Evil series is going to be the next. Uh, that is a non-commentary series because I feel like it would be extremely unimmersive to um, talk. You can check. You can check who's in the chat. Um, let's see. Participants. Let's see. It's just you four and me right now. Um, so I guess me stopping the stream and talking, uh, I'm actually noticing viewers are leaving. Nobody's lurking. I just checked. Uh, it's just us in here right now, guys. But either way, uh, it looks like Resident Evil is the new series. Uh, and, and yes, Albus, uh, I, what Atze said, 100%. I do appreciate it. And, and I do get a little worried that some of the wrong people might get one sometimes if it's that random. Uh, but this time was a score, and I really appreciate that. Um, it's going to be good to have random back. Uh, that, that, that was, that was the killer for me last member's stream was 20 minutes into it. There was nobody here and nobody was talking and you guys are really good about that. And that's when it dawned on me. I was like, oh no. And then I checked the Facebook chat and saw them talking about it. And to me, it just, I felt like, I felt like it was, it was not a waste of time, but I felt like it, people were going to be left out of what I was doing. And I know a lot of people were excited to watch me play Zomboid as Albus. So to answer your question from a long time ago before this even started, Albus, Project Zomboid is a staple to this channel. Like, it will always be being played. It will always be um, a thing that's always going to be on the channel. It's always going to be on the member stream. It's always going to be... I love that game. It's my favorite game. So that's, that's going to be always... I'm just looking to start putting some new series and new gameplays out. And I don't always want to be streaming or talking through them. Sometimes I want it to be, you know, you, like me playing through the Resident Evils and then talking and streaming every time I get scared. It's going to pull people out. So I'd like to put some of those together as game movies. Uh, but things like The Sims and the indie games and some of the other stuff I will definitely stream normally and um, do them live in chat and all that kind of stuff. But we'll go ahead and get back uh, in the chat. Some don't chat, some just view. I used to earlier. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, they, period. As long as they're in the stream, they're the first to to get it. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and pick it back up. Let me see if I can't take the, uh, take this. There we go. We'll take it back a little bit. That way it starts fresh. Oh, God. Come on now. There we go. Black screen. That's what I'm looking for. Black screen. We'll go ahead and start the stream back up. I'm going to go make a couple sandwiches. And uh, that way I can sit and eat with you guys. Um. You're going to start playing Project Zomboid? Uh, man, I'm telling you right now, it's a fun and terribly addicting game. I don't know if you're on Steam or a gamer, but I've had a lot of people tell me that they're really interested in playing it. And uh, it, took, it, took, it took me a while to get the learning curve down. But once you get that down and get a lot of the controls down, it becomes so immersive and so fun to play. Like I, I create challenges for myself because I've played it so much that just playing the regular version of it. It's not even, it doesn't even feel like a challenge. So I have to create these weird challenges. And I'm trying to avoid doing things that other YouTuber streamers are doing with their projects on Boyd. But all right, let's go ahead and get started, guys. It was uh, great talking to you. I appreciate you guys being here. I really, really do. Um, and uh, I will catch up with you guys in the chat here after I get my sandwiches. Routine. That's what it was supposed to be, a routine story. I'd been sent to cover the possible conflict between loggers and environmentalists, as the chainsaws got ever closer to another old growth forest. Support to protect the thousand-year-old trees was strong all across British Columbia. The people had another cause to rally behind. Yet unknown to me, nor the loggers fight to keep their jobs that would become the story. Instead, the forest unlocked one of its hidden doors and released a mysterious, evil legend. Now I realize that the dark forests that surround everyone's town survive with their own rules, their own unknown purpose. (laughs) 
Maybe I'm being a bit melodramatic, trying to give depth and meaning where none exists. But the events of the past few hours affected my life like nothing before. Like I said, it was supposed to be a routine story. Trees, loggers, environmentalists. We've all heard it before. But in the blink of an eye, my eye, the mundane took a sickening twist. Before I get too far ahead of myself, let me tell you how the events unfolded. It was about 12.15 a.m. A long day on the road and a late dinner was putting me into Hope, B.C. later than I wanted. Story of my life. Suddenly, through the midnight fog, I spotted a figure standing in the middle of the road. Another darn hitchhiker, always looking for others to complete their journey. That quick assessment nearly cost me my life. And my story. The details become blurred after that. I hit the creature doing 80 kilometers an hour. What I hit is unknown for now. One thing is for sure, it wasn't human. Experts would tell me later that traces of white fur were embedded in my radiator. Animal fur. But I digress. Smoke and pain brought me back to reality, just in time to see it again. At first, I thought it was dead. The second wrong assessment of the night. Slowly, and I recall this with such clarity, the creature calmly disappeared into the fog and smoke. But not before it had left behind a message. What it had left behind was the remains of 11-year-old David Newsell. Naked, decayed, mutilated, almost beyond recognition. The body of this tiny child looked no better than a roadkill. For the first time in my life, I prayed. When the authorities arrived, I could barely give them a complete sentence. They questioned me well into the morning. The first deliberate thing I did, almost upon instinct, was call my editor. I, Anna Brooks, had just set in motion the wheels of hysteria. I later found out that David wasn't the first child missing recently in the valley. Others thought to be runaways were now being speculated upon. Unfortunately, David's parents were the only ones to see the results. David's mother is now in a hospital. The RCMP immediately began the search. Chief Inspector Cron was to be the media's contact. Besides the police, it seemed like every male with a gun also began his search. They were determined not only to kill the Bigfoot, but to totally annihilate it. For the next few days, everything became a target. Paranoia replaced logic. The rules were simple. Anything that moved was shot. The body count of mistaken animals continued to mount. Immediate exposure soon grew out of hand. Even more frightening was that another young boy had disappeared. Before we had any answers to David Newsell's murder, a whole new set of questions and fears surfaced. What had started as a local Vancouver story about old trees had quickly turned into the news sensation of the year spread across Canada soon. Combine this with the activists out to protect the senseless slaughter of wildlife, environmentalists still trying to save the trees, loggers, more police, scientists, even more media. You can begin to grasp the utter chaotic state that this Fraser Valley community was now faced with. The tragic death of young David Newsell had been turned into a circus, complete with crowds, lights, and someone to call the ringleader. I kept trying to convince myself that it was my job. If I hadn't started the story, someone else would have come across the young boy's body. I remembered that at the first chance, I had called my editor. I keep repeating, Anna Brooks, you were only doing your job. Let me get this straight. You accidentally, emphasis my, had a knife up to that dear old lady's throat because she was going to buy it and couldn't read the brand name? Sounds convincing so far. Well, now I'm wondering, Mr. Jinsu, what kind of deal can you cut me? Get it? I tell you, man, she came up to me first. Regular customer, you know? Of knives? I doubt it. Sure, man. She's the wife of a local butcher, and they were recently robbed, and... Could you move it a bit to the left? Thanks. Anyways, they was robbed and needed to replace some, uh, equipment, man. Listen up, man. Just between you and me, this lie is getting way out of hand. I've wasted enough time on your two-bit excuses. All I'm after is a simple confession. So here are your options. You either tell me the truth, or... When an hour passes, these webs will dissolve. At which time, you will find yourself swimming face first in garbage. I highly recommend you decide quickly. Cause according to my watch, your time is about... Honestly, I didn't... Ah! Up. Or should I say down? Perfect. Almost one hour to the second. Filth has just met filth. I have to admit, it was a pretty awesome belly flop. A quick call to the authorities and my business is done here. Call later. And they say the fun has gone out of superheroing. Just when I think I've been in the business too long, I'm rejuvenated by a new burst of creativity. My new motto is, if you can't scare them into honest life, then antagonize them when they're down. I get I better get home now, because I'm only about four hours late. Mary Jane's not going to be too impressed. 
Okay, so I get a little carried away playing Spider-Man. Now remember, Peter, you just finished teaching that honesty is the best policy. Oh, think quick. Hi, MJ? You see, I met this knife salesman and... All right. I'm off the hook. Fast asleep like a little baby. I'll get it, MJ. Peter, when did you get home? Oh, just a minute or two after you went to bed. Hello? Parker, you've got exactly 25 minutes to pack, grab your equipment, and get to the bugle. I'm sending you on the Bigfoot story. Well, since you've asked so nicely, I'll be there in 24 minutes. Parker, I'm in no mood for your... Why me? Because everyone else was busy. I hate having to leave my sweetie again. I'll make it up to her when I get back. Being the mature superhero wife, she understands. But on top of all that, she's going to take the Simpsons and Twin Peaks while I'm gone. One hurried explanation and a taxi drive later. So Jonah doesn't want his paper to be left in the dust with this Sasquatch story. Fine, I can understand. That he chose me to take the pictures, that's a given. But to hook me up with Melvin Gooner as the reporter? This trip could be longer than I thought. Maybe Jonah's trying to torture me. Hope British Columbia is a nice place. It is now the seventh day of this event. My reports will continue to come in on a daily basis until everything is settled. The idea of writing it from my perspective has been suggested by my editor. Since I broke the story, it seems natural to tap my own emotions. I am tied to this in some involuntary way. More than that, I actually created the hysteria. I created it. But my duty is to report the facts to the people of this province and help guide my paper's journalistic duties. Through all of this, I keep asking the same question. Why? What possible meaning can this have, on a human level or on a divine level? One boy is already dead, his body viciously abused that forensics still can't determine the actual cause of death. Another boy, Bill Rice, is still missing. Who knows what horrors he's been through. We can only hope that the boy will turn home soon. Having lost his way in that forest, and that is just a matter of time, before someone finds him. Safe. On the eighth night, Things turn horrific. Well, boys, looks like that sighting the inspector received is just another scared farmer. Better call it a night. Sweet mother of mercy. Mitchell, what is it? God, is that the rice boy? The dogs are going wild. Keep them back. Now! Cripes! What's wrong with them? Inspector, over here, hurry! I think it's the boy. Looks like the report was right. This is Inspector Cron. I want an emergency crew and all available agents over to the Nichols farm. I mean now. And for Christ's sakes, keep the reporters away. Jeez. I can tell by the remaining clothes it's little Billy Rice. Mitchell, get over to his parents' house and move them before the media gets wind of this. Miss Newsell's still in the hospital with her breakdown. The rest of you boys, we gotta get this creature. I'm not talking in two weeks. I mean fast. In 24 hours fast. Something evil is out there, and it's our duty to blow its brains out. Too dead. Anyone who was a skeptic until now has been instantly converted. People have waited long enough. They want results. Most of the citizens have pulled their kids out of school. At night, save for police and media, the streets are silent. People are hiding their emotions behind steel. Others arm themselves for war. The situation has gotten completely out of control. The media are not helping matters in the least. Quite the opposite. Part of the boy's limbs were missing. It seems to be the only worthy fact to us. The media. Hello, sweetheart. How's everything? Peter, I was wondering when you'd call. I'm doing fine. The question is, how are you? Are things as bad as the papers say? Fortunately, they're not good, MJ. Melvin and I are staying in Chilliwack. Everything was booked up in hope. But yeah, things are pretty hairy right now. I don't know how much longer I'll have to stay. I know, darling. Do what you have to do. I just can't stop thinking about those poor boys' parents. Life isn't supposed to happen like this. No parent should have to see their child die before them. I know. I saw a few medical photos of Billy Rice. It just... I couldn't take it. I left the room and cried. Big, tough guy Spider-Man. You'd think I'd seen everything. But all I could do was cry. It's okay, Peter. We shouldn't ever get used to the horrors in this world. You gonna be okay? Sure. I think I'm gonna step out for some fresh air. I love you, sweetie. I love you, too. Bye. Day 9. Seems like the creature is everywhere again. The town's imagination has torn apart any sense of logic. The beast can't possibly be in eight spots at once. Rumors begin to fly. Maybe there's a whole race of them. Maybe they're biding their time, waiting to wipe out the entire town. A sadistic smorgasbord. 
Beast devouring man. These thoughts people are whispering. It is no longer a circus. Biblical prophecy has taken its place. My mind is becoming numb. My energy just isn't there. And more importantly, neither is my heart. I need to divorce myself from the brutal slayings of innocent animals just to atone for the actions of one. Think about the boys. They were human. These are just animals. Just animals. Things that can't reason. This madness must stop. Things that act irrationally. Huh? These Canadians keep saying how civilized their gun laws are. How Americans shoot anything that moves. Thing is, they haven't had a reason till now. The animals were harmless. Now they're dead. I've counted five dozen. Amateurs. Looking to become heroes. Want to be the one to bag Bigfoot. To bag the baby killer. They don't understand. No animal would stick around in this kind of war zone. Idiots are shooting at ghosts. And shadows. <laughs> and animals. Say your prayers, bub. It's time to meet your maker. If I'll take you. Please. No, I beg you, don't. You what? I beg you. That's it? You beg me and I'm supposed to change my mind and feel remorse? Why? Because I can understand your pleas, see in your eyes that you don't want to die? It's unfair that you're defenseless and mean me no harm, yet I have the power to blow your head off? Now you know how they feel. Those animals that you and your friends are slaughtering want to live just as much as you. Difference is, they can't beg. Nature's been taking care of them for thousands of years. Survival is their goal, and keeping the species alive. A simple formula until man becomes a factor. You know, if they could speak and say, please don't shoot, I beg you, I don't think we would. Our consciences wouldn't let us. But they don't, and nature wasn't kind enough to give them a trigger finger, so the killing continues. <laughs> Fortunately for you, I'm in a generous mood tonight. You spread the word to your friends that killing is wrong. Make sure they get the point. Oh, one more thing. You breathe a word of our meeting to anyone, you won't be given a chance to beg. Sure, sure, okay. I promise. No further words were spoken. None is needed. Kind of funny, though. Don't think I've ever seen a fat man move so quickly. Hope his friends don't shoot him. But seeing as most of his kind are usually quite simple. And a bit forgetful. He might just need a little reminder. Hunter's smart enough to tell folks that kids vandalized it. I know exactly what you mean, Peter. All this killing and hysteria makes you sick, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, excuse me a minute. Melvin, you aren't actually going to eat that mess, are you? Ketchup and donuts? Sure, love them. Please, Mel, don't put that in your mouth. I haven't slept much and my stomach is empty. So unless the aroma of barf sounds appealing, I'd abstain. Jeez, Peter, what a lightweight. I'd have figured you'd be tougher than this. But after the way you reacted to some of the medical pictures of the mutilated boy, it's understandable. On the other hand, I don't quite know why they'd release those photos but say the tests were incomplete. Usually they would do things quite the opposite. Pictures aren't the norm. Maybe there are just different rules here in Canada. The inspector and his crew seem to be aggravating the reporters more than anything. Why would they want to add hassles to this case? Guess they like all the attention. But the way information's getting out is only making this town more paranoid. You'd think they'd be holding info. Not throwing out flares. Hmm, good point. Things are getting too crazy. But you can hardly blame them. Two kids mauled by some monster. Hundreds of media teams crawling everywhere. Not the usual diet for this town. Speaking of which, if you move that bottle one more inch, I'll... Sorry, Pete. Must have lost my... Head? Jeez, looks like a riot out there. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Give you time to finish your donuts in peace. Butcher, fanatic, lives are at stake. What gives Psycho? you the right? You can't shoot everything. Listen, I'll crack your skull. Hey, pal, what's up? Somebody leaked out there. They found over a hundred dead animals. So Greenpeace groupies are exchanging opinions with the Rambo types. Top it off with the nosy reporters, and we've got us a day that me and the missus can be proud of. I can see that you're impressed with this too. Say, you ain't one of them, are you? No, no, I'm from Chilliwack. Big city slickers. Don't need them. Especially them troublemaking Yankees. They don't understand nothing. Ain't no Bigfoot out there. Just a critter the Indians call Wendigo. Of course, no one wants to listen. Especially them Yanks. Guys seem to steal everything. Our pride. 
Our exports, the worst of it all. They even stole Gretzky from Edmonton. What kind of hockey player would want to live in sunshine all the time? I tell you, boy, he was brainwashed. Nightfall. Ditched Melvin. Now I can do my own investigating. Anything to speed up this mess so I can get back to Mary Jane. Wouldn't have taken this assignment if I'd have known it would drag on this long. Unfortunately, I've got to stay in the shadows while I'm here. It'd be too easy to figure out that the Peter Parker in New York of Webb's fame is also in Hope, B.C. with Spidey. I don't need complications. I need answers. The biggest mistake I've made so far is not bringing the thermal underwear. Melvin thinks there might be answers at the top. I still can't believe he eats donuts and ketchup. The man's touched. Hope the RCMP building is this way. It is, but two hours go by before the payoff. Finally! Just about frozen to death. You'd think they'd have the courtesy to show up when I did. That's how it works in the comics. Listen here, lady. You got something to say, then say it. Otherwise, I've got problems to deal with. There's 400 reporters, environmentalists, and rookie hunters I'm trying to handle, as well as keeping this town in some sort of order while the media makes a circus of it. Poor you. People tell me you leaked the body count of the animals to the representative of the Humane Society. You're creating your own problems. If I give any information, I'm causing hysteria. I give up none, it's a cover-up. You got any suggestions, I'm all ears. If not, then let me do my job. Your job doesn't include causing a riot. You're supposed to stop them. Just because you broke the story, Miss Brooks, doesn't give you permission to slander. So why don't you go write your next story about flesh-eating monsters and sell an extra 10,000 copies? Spidey, my boy, things are definitely starting to heat up. So that's the Vancouver reporter who ran into our so-called Bigfoot. Or as the old man said, Wendigo. Time to catch a fly, Spidey. Too bad I can't scare it. But there are other ways to extract info, namely the famous, but often underused, Parker Persuasion. It's not for nothing that the babes swoon over me. Betty, Gwen, Felicia, Mary Jane, ah, the list is endless. Ah, who are you kidding, Petey? The real reason you want to get answers is to get home to your wife sooner. And in the meantime, try to rid this place of some godforsaken monstrosity. I hope the boys, at least, died quickly. Can here. Someone bring Luke Thorpe. I don't care what it takes. It's time we took the offense. If anyone can track this creature, Thorpe's our man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Then sober him up if you have to. Also, have ten men standing by. We're gonna have Thorpe lead us to it. And we're gonna get rid of this headache once and for all. What? You tell them to shove their policies. Better make this quick. Don't want to lose her. There she is. Well, Peter, time to go to work. Excuse me, miss. Thought you'd like to know that this creature you're chasing is called Wendigo. From the Indian myths? It's a flesh eater and has white fur. Sound familiar? You want to get a coffee? Bingo! That's pretty impressive research you've done. Didn't know the Wendigo was as popular as Bigfoot. But the bit about it actually being a person cursed with a creature's spirit and body is a bit much. Still, if a guy like Thor can exist, then anything's possible. What I can't understand is why. When they have an expert coroner from Calgary, the RCMP insists on shipping results to Vancouver for another opinion. Seems like the red tape is more important than comforting the dead boy's parents. Can you imagine what they must be going through? I guess in a small way I can. Lost a girlfriend once. Thought the world of her. It was the first time I was truly in love. We even thought we might get married. But I couldn't protect her. Couldn't help her. Now I'm happily married to a woman who gives my life more meaning than I thought was possible. Still, I can't help but wonder how things might have been. Then the guilt sets in for even thinking about it. But I can't forget. I wouldn't be right either. Sorry for your pain, Peter. I gotta tell you, you sure break the typical New Yorker stereotype all to pieces. Huh? Oh, excuse me, Anna. I don't usually feel sorry for myself. It's just the thought of those boys and that thing. I know what you mean. The story has gotten way too personal with me, too. Unfortunately, I've got an editor back in Vancouver who expects my column every day. And to tell you the truth, Peter, I could use the boost that this story has given my career. Not to mention the extra money. My job is to write something that sells papers, even if I don't have all the facts. Nightfall. Finally. Time to check out where the first boy was found. Reporter said creature laid boy out on road. This is it. No blood. Just some moss and dirt left behind. Stench of rubber still strong from the reporter's car. And my suspicions are correct. 
But now I've got a trail. Didn't want to believe it was back. Then why'd you come? Your instincts are always right. Wendigo. This country keeps turning its myths into reality. Now we've got a baby killer. Creature's sin is like a beacon. Only thing interesting is the smell of the dead animals. Nice rationale. We can't find one creature, so slaughter another. Eventually we might be right. Humanity. What a concept. Fortunately, I won't live forever. Here's where the boy was buried. The ground is still moist with blood. Nature's way of giving me clues. And unless my senses have gone haywire, which they haven't, this area is in big trouble. Gotta find someone in town I can trust. There are other bodies out there. Thor, where are we headed? All the reports have been from the west end of the summit. The man's a loony, John. He's also good at what he does. He must have his reasons. Yeah, well, I wish he'd let us in on some of them. How many more hours are we supposed to spend out here? The guy moves through this forest like a man possessed. Maybe he is. Great. Behold, gentlemen. Your treasure. No one move. Now! Now look at what you've done! Guess I'd better try and find Melvin. He's probably wondering what's going on. Promised Anna that I'd keep her facts to myself. Might as well get a good night's sleep. Looks like another dud evening. That wasn't an animal scream I just heard. The Wendigo's just been found. By fools. Those fragging idiots. Why'd they try to kill something when they don't have all the answers? A few dead kids and all sense and reasoning disappears. Guess humans just need to pin this on something. But to go after Wendigo? That's insanity. The creature will shred them apart before they blink. Considering what they've done to other animals, it's their own problem. Yeah, and I just happen to be running in the right direction by coincidence. Curse my conscience. 500 meters away, a nightmare is occurring. Led by the town tracker, six men attempted to hunt and eliminate the creature that has been killing their children. Before they could get a jump, nerves got the better part of one of the posse. A shot was fired. Like any animal backed into a corner, this wendigo means to defend itself to the death. These men had no idea what this creature was, or even if it truly existed. But the attempt to protect their own species may very well be the last thing they do. With a bullet in its belly, the monster carves a path through the hunters. It has been hunted long enough. The forest is its home, a place of safety. But recently, that has been shattered. The sound of motors and guns and men have disturbed the natural way of things. The forest creatures have dealt with enough. Wendigo will bring about its own sense of order. The posse is smart enough to leave the ruler of this jungle alone. They can't pay me enough. No way I'm gonna die for some godforsaken monster. We gotta tell the inspector. Hey, hey, where's Eddie? Did that chicken get a head start already? He'd better not have taken the wagon. Wendigo. Go. go ahead and kill me. See if it takes you as long to slaughter a man instead of children. The creature just stares. Finally, it raises its arm for the death blow. At that moment, Eddie is gripped by fear. In the back of his mind, he thinks this is what the children went through too. Suddenly, like some wild banshee, Wolverine strikes. Broken glass being dragged across sheet metal best describes the sound he makes. Whether it's for bravado or instinctive, the noise accomplishes its purpose to distract and to save. Keep your head down, bub. I'm gonna state the obvious here. I think you should leave, now. Uh, yes sir, right away, sir. Those Mounties are such a polite lot. Won't pop my claws. This whole situation ain't Wendigo's fault. I'll just keep on the defensive until the hunters are all gone. Of course, Wendy doesn't know I'm being so charitable. This'll make things a bit more challenging. Come on, Peter, wake up. We got a story. Some cops are back in town. They said they met the Bigfoot. Jeez, what time is it? Who cares? We're on to something big here. It'll take 20 minutes just to drive to Hope, so hurry it up. This could be the break we need. Someone other than that Vancouver reporter who can verify this creature. Plus, we know what side of the mountain he's on. The thing doesn't have a chance. Say, I didn't know they made Felix boxer shorts. Melvin, I'll see if I can't find you a clean pair. Come on in and sit down. I'll be ready in a minute. That Melvin, what a jerk. To tell you the truth, Melvin, I'm getting tired of this story. I didn't realize it would drag on this long. Plus, all the information that's being linked out is just complicating things even further. Peter, if we can befriend one of those injured cops, there's a chance we can all go home soon and have a great story, too. I think I see him up ahead. Lovely. Wendigo's inserting himself too much. He can't afford to lose more blood. Bullet must have hit an artery. If he doesn't stop fighting, he's gonna be in serious trouble. Not that I'm enjoying this. Ah, oh, no. Not again. Come on, Wolvie. Do us both a favor and end this. Then get into town and find an ally. 
Well, I don't know what I found out here. Everyone's on a wild goose chase. What'd it look like? How big was Did it? Did you find any there other more kids? Of was there a stack Why of bodies? Why are still alive? Tell us what happened. Was anyone killed? Okay, big fella. Guess it's time to join you at your level. Costume was bugging me. I need to be as free as possible. See how it reacts to something as savage. As animalistic. As wild as itself. I drag my scream out for 30 seconds. And then I just stare at Wendy. He won't look at me. Never had a showdown before. Don't think he likes it. Not my problem. Maybe he's lost too much blood. Maybe he's just had enough of us stinking humans. Whatever the reason is, he just leaves. I've got to get to town and straighten this mess up. Been too many innocent deaths already. On both sides. Melvin, I'm heading over to the police station. I can't believe they just let those officers run off at the mouth without any kind of debriefing. Then I'm going to find Miss Brooks and see if she has any leads. I'll catch up with you tomorrow back at the hotel. Sounds good. I've got the address to the tracker who took these guys out to the mountain. Maybe he'll be useful. Peter, see if you can find out when the new forensic report will be back from Vancouver. Yo, Spidey. I think I could use a bit of your help. Uh, what did you say? You heard me, boy. I've got a slight problem with this Wendigo fella. I think you can help. Meet me half a mile due north of town in a couple of hours. We'll get some answers then. I disappear into the night. Believe me, I'm just as surprised with his presence as he is with mine. Two hours later. I don't know what's going on here, but it's time to find out. That stranger's voice sounded familiar. He didn't set my spider sense off, so I've got that going for me. I'll have to go into the police station tomorrow morning, then meet Melvin to see what he found out. You know, Peter, you don't need these complications in your life. It's hard enough trying to figure out who this Wendigo mess is without worrying about some night-prowling stranger. On the other hand, what other good-looking superhero is in town? So, got that going for me, too. Fortunately, that stranger called Peter Parker Spider-Man, which is a problem. 3,000 miles from New York and some guy in Canada knows my identity? Doesn't make sense. I don't know anyone in British Columbia. Heck, I hardly know anyone in Canada, period. Mary Jane and the people at the Fugue are the only ones who know I'm here. More questions. That's all I need. Certainly not in any mood to go through any meaningless attacks like I did with that Craven Witch last month. She was something freaky. Heck, all the villains are freaks. And I'll know if I'm dealing with another in about ten seconds. Clearing is below. Might as well make this dramatic. Never fear, Spidey's here, in his underwear. Real mature, schoolboy. Wolverine, you'd be face down right now if I were the bad guy. You didn't know if I were a friend or foe. Why would you give me an edge? The fool who signals an enemy isn't long for this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the lecture, Pops. I'll have the car home by 11. What's your problem? I've been in this business longer than you. My spider sense told me you weren't hostile, so I thought I'd have a little fun. Speaking of which, why the old yellow and blue suit? You got a reunion to attend after? A couple seams came loose on the other one, so I wanted to put on something that reminded me of a time I didn't know you. Oh, he made a funny... I think this guy has some potential. You never stop, do you? Nah. Besides, it keeps me young. So what brings you here? Can't be the crowds or the hype. It's the killings. The thought of dead animals, especially dead children, sickens me. I've seen my fair share of sick situations, but this one's contagious. Those fragon hunters are determined to kill everything until they get it right. And unfortunately, I can't stop them all. Which is where you come in. Great. Now I'm supposed to stop the hunters. Unless we forget the RCMP, the environmentalists, and the reporters. Facts, buddy. I've got to have something solid. Ah, shut up, kid. I don't want you mowing them down. Just remove their motivation. Let them know their target's in town. Just keep them out of the forest. Listen, I've got a hundred innocent animals slaughtered out in the forest by some hyperactive weenies. They think Bigfoot killed the boys. I say he didn't. I went to the road where the first boy was found, where the reporter first saw our Bigfoot. The smells told me that it was a wendigo that carried the boy there. I followed the trail to where the boy had been buried. The stench of a human adult was still evident. The wendigo didn't kill that boy. He just happened to stumble upon the body. To verify my suspicions, I went to the field where they found the second boy, Billy Rice. You know what my senses said? No trace of wendigo anywhere. Only smell of that same human adult and dogs. So I went back into the forest to track down the wendigo. Before I found him, I came across a couple of his kills. Both were deer, no human flesh, ever near. My problem, the hunters continue to kill the animals. That will not continue. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that those two dead boys have nothing to do with Wendigo? Whew. 
That is a problem. We've got an entire town believing that a seven-foot monster is going to snatch their kids and drag them into the dark. And with the media blowing this thing way out of proportion, I can hardly blame them. I tell you, Wolvie, from my media experience, once the wheels of propaganda have been set in motion, reality becomes a moot point. Plus, Anna Brooks, the reporter that cracked this story, tells me someone is leaking information that adds fuel to the fire. These people want a Bigfoot. They'll get a Bigfoot. It's the only way they'll feel safe again. And I've got to admit, six officers getting attacked by a Wendigo doesn't help any. They attacked him. Do you understand? He didn't provoke anything. They hunted him. And when he was shot, he did what any injured animal would do. He defended himself. It's not his problem the cops are so easily scared. But we're getting off the point. The hunters, the RCMP, they're armed. They can shoot back. It's the innocent animals I'm concerned about, and the kids that you should be worried about. Time to make a choice. But I'm in like Flynn. Okay, then let's go catch us a murderer. Day 10. Finally happened. Someone else has seen Wendigo. As a matter of fact, six people saw it. There were officers in the bush, hunting down this savage baby killer when the monster attacked them. Two were in the hospital with injuries. The others are shaken emotionally. I understand the fear. To face something eye to eye that you don't believe exists is disturbing. It blows all of your previous assessments of life to smithereens. If a creature like this can roam the forest undetected for who knows how many years, what else could exist? What other horrors could be lurking outside our windows without us ever knowing? But now we do know. From my selfish perspective, that's good. Ever since that first night when I ran into the Wendigo with my car, I've wondered if it was actually real. The blood, fur, and flesh wedged into the grill of my now-crushed car said it was. So, even though the attack upon the RCMP is a horrible reality, their sighting now makes it feel like I'm not totally alone. The weight off my conscience will now allow me to sleep with some sort of peace for the first time in 10 days. As for the RCMP officers, luckily they were armed. Maybe that's why the creature chose the children. They were innocent, harmless, easy prey. Good, she's in her room. One officer reported that they found the creature almost instantly with the local tracker Luke Thorpe leading the way. When the monster viciously attacked, the Mounties shot back. They said the Sasquatch was hit, but were unable to determine the extent of the wounds. Does this mean that we may have seen the last of... Miss Brooks? It's me, Peter Parker. She is not going to like this. Heck, from what Wolverine told me, I don't like this. Peter, come on in, and please call me Anna. I was just writing my column for tomorrow. I'm sure you heard about the attack. So what do you think? That's why I'm here, Anna. I've been given some information that strongly suggests that someone in town killed those two boys, not the Wendigo. What? That's absurd. I wish it were, but the info I've gotten from my source says this whole Bigfoot thing has been a sham. Yes, the Wendigo exists, but it only happened upon the Noosel boy for whatever reason. It was bringing him closer to town when you ran into it. We have to let the people in on this. But that's not why I'm here. We've got a madman running around who's a possible child killer and no one knows? This is crazy. You come storming in here to tell me that Wendigo, who is crating around a poor dead child, and who attacked those Mounties, is innocent? Give me a break. I've been busting my butt on this story, covering every angle. So far, nothing points to humans. I don't know why you'd do this, Peter, but I expected better from you. I thought you were different than the other shark reporters. What would possess you to do this? Because it's the truth. Listen, Anna, I hate this as much as you do. Because the sick thing is, I wouldn't have been sent here if this was only a murder. Routine murders don't sell papers. I'm not here to wreck your story. At this point, I wish it were true. But the evidence I have says otherwise. What evidence? Show me. And just who is your source? I can't say right now. You can't say. That does it. You take your so-called facts and you shove them. I'm writing the story of my life and I don't have time to deal with professional jealousy. Now get out of here. I'm sorry you feel that way. Now it's me who would have expected better. Before I go, you ask yourself a few questions, since you seem to have all the answers. Why did the boy have on clothing and the other didn't? Wendigo wouldn't change his habits. And why have the forensic reports been delayed, except for a few facts that were helped to fuel the fire of the confusion? If you're interested, I've got plenty more unanswered questions. You know where you can reach me. Somewhere in the deep forest, an innocent victim struggles to maintain consciousness. It feels a burning pain deep in its belly although it cannot rationalize why it's there. The word bullets has no meaning. It doesn't feel right. That much it does know. So instinctively, the Wendigo does what it can to help itself. The fight with the RCMP and the Wolverine have taken their toll, especially with gunshot wounds to even the odds. 
The creature cares about none of this. Somebody's gonna pay dearly. Spidey better be doing his job, because I'm getting tired of waiting. Time's running out. I thought Anna could help me with the other reporters. Guess the hype has swallowed her up, too. Looks like I'm on my own. Can't risk exposing myself right now, because that would just complicate matters. So... The RCMP is my next bet. But why do I know they're not going to welcome the news? Or the ramifications? Because, dear Spidey, you've been down this path too many times. I hope they'll believe some of the evidence I give them. If not, Melvin's gonna become my buddy real fast. You know, I'm getting tired of you guys. You can't get your story the proper way. You just make up your own answers. But I'll take all your suggestions in a serious professional manner. Unless, of course, you'll produce your source. I've already told you I can't. Listen. It's all here in this folder. I just thought you might be somewhat concerned about the truth. We'll handle this. Sure. Thanks for nothing. Let me see that folder, Carl. What kind of twisted mind would blame a local? Who knows? Guy was pretty hyper, though. He said he was from New York. Figures. Said some interesting things to Frank and me. But you'll see it in his report, Inspector. God, if this gets out, we're in big trouble. Someone get me Thor up. Where'd he get this stuff? Wounds starting to soften up. Good old Mother Nature works every time. I haven't done this in a while, so I'd better make sure the area's numb. Don't need Winnie to flinch on me. There, that about does it. Now it's work time for Dr. Adamantium. Funny, I don't get to use these claws for positive reasons that often. It's nice to know my Vegematics can do more than slice and dice, though there's something to be said for that too. Now if I can just stop this bleeding and... Got it. If the wound's not infected and the Wendy doesn't strain himself, I think the operation will be a success. Here's a souvenir, bub. I'd give Spidey two more hours. Then it's my turn to convince the good citizens of hope. If he doesn't come bringing good news, then I'll go into town and sniff down the bloody pig myself. No one's gonna die while I'm here. A living cancer is walking around killing, and it's my job to make him terminal. You can't be serious. Come on, Peter. You're just a photographer. How'd you get that kind of information? It doesn't matter. Are you kidding? Everyone's on the path to the left, but you say the answers are on the right. Better believe it matters. Mel, I wasted an hour just tracking you down. Time is crucial. You'll get all your answers later. The cops are useless right now, so we've got to do this on our own. Come on, even if this were true, we can't stop the wheels of paranoia. We're in this, whether we like it or not. Wrong, you're in this. I'm just a photographer, remember? I can make an idiot of myself. And because my career doesn't hinge upon this story, I can let an odd piece of doubt enter in. I'm not saying I've got all the answers, but you're going to have to accept that neither do you. I'm not asking you to go out with my men this time. You do whatever you have to. But unless you can nail this creature in the next 48 hours, I don't need you. There are rumors that could devastate the community and- Like the killer might not be the monster. What? How did you know? Just a hunch, amongst other things. Look, Thorpe, we need to give the people something. Anything! I understand what you need. You're not concerned about this killer. You're worried about your neck that's about to be chopped. I'll get your Bigfoot, but it will be on my terms, my way. I don't care about catching a sacrificial pig. I just want those annoying reporters out of my woods. I'm not concerned about your motivations. It's been 10 days. I want that creature dead by day 12. That's how you can have the woods all to yourself. Wendigo. Glad to see you're feeling better. Who says you're wimpy? Now, before you rip my head off, let me tell you what's up. If we don't solve this little case of mistaken identity soon, I don't think your odds of living the year are very good. Heck, surviving the week. But we don't have control over that. What we do have control over is where we go and when we go. So you need to follow my lead. I have to find another body. That'll be the last piece of evidence they might want. And I promise, you've got nothing to lose. Trust me. Oh. Though the creature can't understand, it trusts something. Its instincts. This stinks. Anna won't believe me, the cops won't believe me, and Melvin's an idiot. I just can't understand them. Just because Wendigo had the dead boy in his hands and attacked the Mounties, what kind of reasons are those to assume he's guilty? I wouldn't believe me either. But I can't bring Wendigo here. He'd be dead before he hit the city limits. Whew. What a story that'd make. Actually, Wolby could hide Wendigo. That's not a problem. What bothers me is that our murderer's down there, and I can't do anything about it. I can't let anyone see me, which hinders my daytime activity. 
I'm getting to be like that bat fella. I don't think I've ever seen as sick a story as this. Careers, headlines, prestige. My God, are we missing the point? Even worse, do we want to get it? Are sales going to dictate our ethics? So there's a murder. Yahoo! We've read about that before. We wouldn't want to think about the boy's parents and family. They become a freak show. I just don't know anymore. Mary Jane, where are you when I need you? Well, time to meet Woolby, but he is not going to be impressed with my effort. Then again, neither am I. I just hope he was able to find something. It's been a long night. For the first time, Wendy howls not with pain or anger, but with anguish. Wendigo. The media won't believe us. The RCMP won't believe us. Cripes, even Spider-Man's partner won't. They're idiots anyway. I've given them all the clues they need. But everyone's caught up in the light show. Well, Spidey had his chance. Time to alter our tactics. I'm tired of giving them a choice. From now on, we do things my way. Period. Because I want them here. You got a problem with that? No, no. Just, uh, wondering. That's all. Good. We just found another body. Another boy. I'm going into town. I need you to babysit for a while. Come on, Wolby. That's crazy. I'll go get the Mounties, then I can... Wendigo! Sheesh. Okay, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You've had your chance. Now it's mine. You don't expect me to. Wait here? You bet your rear I do. I've got enough dead animals here to dam a river. And that dead boy's there. He's not the last. I guarantee it. Your friends don't want to believe you. Fine. But I can be very persuasive when I need to. So you just enjoy some time with Wendy. I'll be back to give you further orders. Oh, if you decide to change your mind, I think the media would be quite enthused with a couple of facts. Get my drift, Parker? Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of the kid. My God. What have they done to him? Wendigo! What now? I'm just trying to help. At least let me cover the boy up. No! I need the boy out in the open so I can get a confession. I want the murderer to see his aftermath of his actions. Wendigo will keep any predators from the body. Your job is to stop the humans. Mine's to make them pay. Wendigo's belly's still mending from the bullet wounds. Make sure he doesn't get too excited. What if he tries to go for the boy? I told you he doesn't eat human flesh. Not yet. He's hiding from the hunters. Thinks we are too. No sense in changing his mind. Now wait a minute. How long am I supposed to wait? As long as it takes. Now kindly remove your hand before you lose it. Before you go, give me one good reason why I should listen to you. I'll give you more than that. One, we've got three dead boys and counting. Two, we've got hundreds of dead animals and counting. Two and a half. I'm a moody little cuss. I promise you don't want reason three. I turn to leave thinking that I've made my point. Or should I say points? But I swear that Spider-Man is one of the gutsiest fools I've met. Or the stupidest. Either way, you've got to admire his persistence. This time, Wendy makes my point for me. Looks like he's convinced Spidey to stay. <laughs> my, aren't we protective? Later. Hope ain't such a bad little town. It'd be a lot nicer if some of the leeches weren't here. I can tell the residents have just about lost their patience. So I'd better finish this hunt. Covered half the town already. Shouldn't be a problem to finish the rest. The scents coming from the boy I found tell me whoever did this hangs around town. Good thing, because I didn't have time to check those who live in the sticks. Whoever the pig is that killed those boys will stink of death. The sad part is, he's going to make this too easy for me. Which brings me here. Now, if I can just... Got him. Now, ain't that interesting? Gotta do this so the boy's parents know the truth. As we enter the 11th day, the tension is still unbearable. I can't believe how consuming this whole affair has been. The speculations of the uninformed makes trying to bring you the truth even more difficult. Rumors abound. I heard one about how Bigfoot attacked a couple in a cabin, but the woman talked the creature out of killing her husband when she showed him her husband's chest. The Sasquatch was so impressed with how hairy the man was that they bonded. I guess they both were half man, half beast. What a piece of junk. What am I writing for, the Inquirer? Face the facts, Anna, my dear. Peter has you confused. If even a little of what he says is true, I'm totally wasting my time. And towns. But this is a chance of a lifetime. 
I can't screw up. How many times will I get the right headline news? All this stuff isn't my fault. I can't control the actions of others. But I have to compete with them. Look out for number one. This is unreal. They use my name in vain. There's nothing sacred anymore. Oh, you got a patent on the name? Come on, eh? Wolvie told us to sit tight. He can handle it. Eleven days. I'm not so sure. Come on. He's a pro, eh? I'm a professional. I can't let others get to me. I have a job to do and deadlines to meet. Hope Peter and the others can learn to live with themselves. I sent in a false report that gets the cops moving in our direction. Saying that Thorpe has Wendigo pinpointed. The inspector sends out a posse of six. All armed to the teeth. Thorpe is supposed to lead them to the slaughter. Unfortunately, I've got other plans for him. Thorpe is closer to the situation than he thinks. He's a good tracker, but not that good. It's time you and I had a few words. With Thorpe in my grasp, I can settle this thing my way. Quick and clean. Spider-Man's methods didn't get results. I don't know why he's such a goody two-shoes. This little piggy went to the store. This little piggy wants some more. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Aren't we mature? Heck, Wendy's a pushover once you've gotten past the disgusting thing he calls a face. So, what's up? There's six Mounties about a half a mile from here. Three are on the northeast side. The others are on the west. I need you to stall them for me. And what's your part? To end this thing. Tonight. I don't know what's going on, but if you can somehow nail this creep, then do it. For the first time, it looks like we're on the same wavelength. Hope it lasts. On the south side, there's another guest. I leaked out a different location to the inspector's group. Marty! Jimmy! Where the heck are you? I took out another two. No sense in having a crowd. Besides, it's the inspector's presence that I need tonight. But first, let's disarm him. Initially, I step on a dry branch to get his attention. Huh. Then I make sure to keep it. Cripes! I think he gets the message. Bub, I'm looking for a confession and I'm gonna need your help to get it. So follow me, cause there's something I want you to see. Don't wanna hurt these guys, just run a bit of interference. Can't let any of them see me though. The town's got enough problems. Only six of them now. But I heard one say the hunters will be coming as backups. I'll have to do this fast. Webbing them up is fast. Cause it'll disappear in an hour. Won't have any evidence I was here. Still, how do I get the Mounties and media to believe our story? Cripes, is that Thorpe? You're freaking right it is. Now you can just stand there, Inspector, and I'll make everything clear. The first boy the reporter found, David Newsell, wasn't killed by Bigfoot. My senses found only human odors. The only reason they sent out the autopsy to Vancouver was to verify the injuries. The boy wasn't mauled, only decomposed. The second boy, Billy Rice, was found at Nichols' farm. Only thing is, old man Nickel never phoned in the report. It was a setup. That boy was different. He was mauled, but by dogs, not monsters. He was wearing clothes the first boy wasn't. Reports of dead animals set the humanitarians against the hunters. Another smokescreen. And now this third boy, naked and decomposed. Creatures don't change their habits. People do. You wanted the hills to yourself, didn't you, mountain man? But your sick perversion backfired. Yeah, yeah. There's a monster out here, all right. But it's not the Bigfoot. You kidnapped those boys. After they ran away from home, figured no one would miss them. Then you kept them and abused them. Had to satisfy your twisted need for little boys. <laughs> Please. Funny no one noticed the victims were all young boys. In the end, you disposed of them when you were done. Burying them to rot in the ground. You're sick. Do you hear me? Sick! This is for the boys! Die, pig! Die! Okay, easy part of stopping these guys. What do I do now? Wolvie said he'd get some results, but somehow, I don't trust his methods. He seems to be more reckless than I am. Fortunately, I haven't been able to do squat. Been handcuffed into trying to hide my identity. I think it's time to forget about my needs. Pretty sick, huh? Fact is, he didn't kill the boys. You did. I just didn't want any witnesses to see what's going to happen to you. I don't know what you're talking about. Have it your way. But I think there's someone here that says differently. Wendigo! Please, keep him away. I'll do anything. Then start talking and don't skip the good parts. Okay, okay. I admit it was me. The boys. They were having problems. They were gonna run away. Didn't mean to hurt them. But what if they told? So I planted the rice boy. 
Had the dogs chew him before I buried him. Forgot to take off his clothes. Didn't think anyone would notice the first boy didn't have any. Then I stalled the autopsy. Sent it to Vancouver. Figured if we got the Bigfoot, then I'd be safe. But the reporters, they, they wouldn't... Guy's even crazier than I thought. But he rambles on for about ten minutes before doing something stupid. You'll never stop me. Here. Idiot. I don't need to stop you. Thorpe's been awake the whole time. I pulled my claws before I slugged him. He's been playing possum so he could hear the truth. Besides, your confession's on tape. Stole a pocket recorder from a reporter in town. Figured it'd take the word of Thorpe and your voice to convince the media. They trusted you, Kron. But you abused that power. So you can run, but you can't hide. When the town folk learn the truth, I'm sure you'll get what you deserve. If not, I'll leave the score myself. Twenty-four hours later. Well, Thorpe convinced the cops about Kron's guilt. Give them all the info they needed. Funny thing is, media wasn't too happy. Guess a monster killer is more exciting than a human. Anna Brooks eventually wrote a legitimate article based on the copy of the tape, but her editors didn't consider it front-page news anymore. Pretty sick world when the truth isn't worth printing. The boys' families have been discarded. The reporters got their story. Now it's up to the others to pick up the pieces. At least they've still got their Bigfoot mystery. Plus, it's kind of poetic how Kron was shot and killed by hunters, who were there caught up in the hysteria he created. But there are still a few more bodies out here in the forest. The least I can do is take them to town. Give the parents some sense of finality. Instead of having them wonder if their boy will ever return. It'll give them an answer, but crush any hope they might have had. Jeez, what a mess. Nice job, Pete. You have dead boys, dead animals, and a dead child molester. Seems like we achieved a lot. I'm getting tired of these other so-called heroes' methods. We have to find ways to solve these things better. Wolverine, Punisher, Ghost Rider, they're starting to make me as sick as the villains. God, it's even scarier as maybe this is the best we can do. Hope Mary Jane can convince me otherwise. Hey, 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 guys. Uh, this is my spinning, spinning screen. You guys want to see my desktop? because I have um, changed it to on my Umbrella Corporation's uh, user login and access code and security screen um, because I'm a huge nerd and this is what I do with my time. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on this stream. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was kind of impromptu, but I plan on doing these every two weeks. Um, I really appreciate it. Figure, thank you for stopping in, man. I'm glad you at least made it at, towards the end here to at least say bye, hi and bye. Albus, thank you. Uh, Random T, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, those of you that are lurking, I also appreciate you being here and hanging out. Um, next time, hop, feel free to hop into the chat. Um, louder. I can't. I'm not gonna get any louder. Um, I'll be screaming. Well, anyway, uh, it's I appreciate it, you guys, and I just wanted to say bye, physically say bye to you guys. Maybe start doing this a little more on these. Uh, pausing and doing like halfway breaks and chatting with everybody and hey you know and that's what i mean figure i, I see you saying i got to at least say hi. that's i appreciate it man just at least stopping in at least you caught some of it um i i understand everybody's got a lot of stuff going on and people streaming at the same time sort of things and i totally understand uh ah oh, phoenix man I just see it got in at the end, but it was fun. Yeah, man, go back and watch it if you want. I, I did stop halfway through and uh, did a little bit of intermission to chat with people. Uh, I will be doing this again in two weeks with my, all the Batman stuff. I wanted to uh, finish up um, Batman One Dark Knight before I started a Batman, I guess. I call them showcases because it's not really a marathon. The aliens have so much I can marathon that. But with this stuff, uh, I can maybe just call it like a... Uh, a um a showcase so i wanted to at least finish up batman one dark knight and then by the time i get back around to aliens uh, i'll have issue six done and that'll close up that entire philip kennedy johnson run uh which that's cool because that's that'll be a completed series for me that's uh, that's major that's big um but yeah i appreciate you guys at least for stopping in uh phoenix especially i'm glad you at least made it and enough time to say bye and hi and all that stuff um 
But either way, either way, uh, I will definitely see you guys tomorrow, coffee and cigarettes at 1.30. Um, and I will have my special guests with me, Fulcrum Entertainment. I will have Gil Gilbert and Harrison, and then Peaky's going to be a special guest, Peaky Arrow. Um, so we're going to talk about collabing and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you want me to you want to punch? Whoa, a physical buy. Punch me with a goodbye. Whoosh! Goodbye! Shapiram! Okay, that, I'm sorry. That was my Robert sound effects, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to go uh, relax, guys. It's been a weird day for me, uh, and i got to check up with Grandma.